everybody welcome to off the rack i'm sal and i'm tiffany this is a show where we take comic books from the past week recap them review them tell you what we thought about them and then give you recommendations for books that are coming out this week that we think you should pick up also when uh, applicable there are big comic book movie or shows that we'll also review and talk about or in the case of today's episode we're gonna be talking about the snyder cut trailer and uh, our first impressions on that we're gonna save that to the end uh along with our giveaway! We've got a big giveaway today! Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the show. If you would like uh, a original head sketch by the current artist on the upcoming, and by upcoming I mean literally Wednesday, uh, comic book series Savage from Valiant Comics, uh, you're in luck. You're on the right show. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to give you a hashtag in the chat. We're going to have an intrepid moderator grab three people from the chat periodically throughout the show. So we're going to keep reminding you to use it because it's not fair if we just pick the first three in the first like few minutes of the yeah, show. That would be not good. That would not be fair. So instead, we're going to just be giving you an opportunity to throw your hat into the race uh, and our intrepid moderator will pull all of those hashtags, throw them into an aggregator and grab three randomly selected winners. Here's the provisions and then we'll give you the deets. First of which... Uh, you need to be at the end of the show, live, in order to actually win. We're going to announce the name. I'm not hunting you down. It's just, it's just plain laziness on my part. I'm not looking for you. I'm not hunting you down. So if you're not there in the chat to say, that's me that you just announced, and your name corresponds with your affirmative reaction, then you ain't getting the head sketch. End of story. So you got to be there. Two, you got to... Let me email you. I got to get your deets. I got to get your address, your uh, name. That's pretty much it. And third, normally I say you got to be within the continental United States. Not in this particular case. What? Because they're being shipped from the artist. They're coming from not the United States anyway. So they're going to be going anywhere. So this contest is open to all of you. Everybody. So if you're here... And you're like, damn it, I live in Canada. Or Belize. Guess what? You could still get that head sketch. So be sure to use the hashtag that we mentioned at the top of the of, of the show. Uh, we'll let you know in a minute. So, uh, <laughs> let me show you a little bit of the art from the upcoming Savage uh, comic that is coming out on Wednesday. To give you an idea, an inkling, a sousson, if you will, of what you're in for. Uh, I actually genuinely dig... Uh, Nathan Stockman's art, I think it's really fun, it's really kinetic, it's energetic. Uh, I think he'd be terrific on any youthful, he'd be great on Super Sons, he'd be great on Spider-Man, and he's doing a great job on this Savage book, which I've had the pleasure of actually looking at multiple pages, and in fact, I've read, I think this full issue, I think I've read this whole issue <laughs> ahead of time, and I can tell you that it's fun, uh, and really, really terrific art, really fun character designs. And uh, Nate's done a really nice job. And so if you'd like an original head sketch on a blank variant cover of Savage Number 1 of any character, one singular character that you want, enter the uh, enter to win. And how do you enter? Hashtag Savage. Just Ooh. use hashtag sh Savage in the chat. I'm going to do that too because I want one of these. So hashtag Savage. So now it's in the chat. I feel like that's I'm not gonna, I'm, cheating. I, I'm not actually. If I, even if it was accidentally me, I, I'm not going to give it. But, uh, <laughs> Doesn't mean I can't. <laughs> so just in this show, while you're watching it live, sorry to those of you who are watching it after the fact, hashtag Savage, you enter to win. We're going to pick three of you. That's a nice number. I agree. I agree. It's a solid number. Right? That's three's a, a good number. force. Damn right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. If it's good enough for Link, it's good enough for the rest of That's us, right. I'd say. And so we're going to remind you periodically throughout the show. So but once, any number. But once you've entered, you're good. That's right. You don't have so, to keep doing it. If you've entered now, you're in. You're good. So you, you, they got you. In 25 minutes, I'm going to remind everybody again, like, hey, listen, don't forget hashtag Savage Venture to win. If you've already entered half an hour earlier, you don't need to do it. It doesn't... It doesn't it, increase your odds. Does the character have to be from Savage? No, it does not. Okay. Character can be... It could be the Tick. It could be the Predator. It could be Superman. It could be Spider-Man. It doesn't matter. It could be Bloodshot. It could be Bloodshot. It, be... it could be Exo. But it doesn't have to be Valiant. It could be any character. It could be Leonardo of the Ninja Turtles. It doesn't matter. There you go. So there you go. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the big exciting news we that's, have. That's dope. For those of you that means you also there. get an issue of Savage. As you well. also get a free comic. Now that comic uh, is coming out on Wednesday. Your issue won't be out 
for a couple of months. <laughs> you because get time to do the he, art. He's got to do the art three times. He's got to contact he's you. He's got to contact. Well, well, yeah, he's got to get your deeds. Someone's going to contact you. Yo, Valiant's going to coordinate he'll all be, that for he'll you. He'll be contacting. But they're going to they're going to coordinate with you. It could be me, could I be guess. <laughs> it could be if it is. If it is, please share it. Don't uh, do that. But if you do win, it's please okay. be sure to share it no matter it what. Doesn't, it's, it doesn't. But yeah, don't. There's no extra. Point. Yeah, don't waste your money on me. Uh, but uh, speaking of wasting your money on me, did you know this show is sponsored by viewers like you? If you're watching the show live, not only can you also get a free Savage head sketch, or rather head sketch of a character of your choosing by the artist on the book Savage from Valiant Comics, but you can also use the Super Chats to uh, raise a question, or post a comment, and we'll read it here on the show. Like these fine people right here. Girk Pectus has two comments. He says, did you know Kevin Feige admitted he only got Civil War greenlit because Batman v Superman was coming out? At least one good thing came out of that piece of shit movie. Regardless of your opinions about BBS, I think that a couple of good things came out of that. One, you got a dope ass costume. Two of them, maybe for the price of one. Yeah. I really like the the bat suit in those movies. Sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, I did not know that. I don't. I and I haven't confirmed it, so I can't. Right. Can't I can speak see to him it. pitching that. Being yeah, being like, like they're gonna make that Batman Superman they're gonna, movie. They're doing a versus movie. We we'll do a versus. We movie. We should do a versus. We have the original versus movie. There's literally there's comics about it. They'll be like. I don't care. I don't care about that. What is comic? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's them. <laughs> and uh, he also adds, uh, any movies you refuse to watch even after, even once? For me, Godfather 3 and Star Wars Episode 3. Have you gone to Top Golf? I hate golf, but I love that place. I've never been to Top Golf. Uh, I probably never will. But uh, uh, as far as uh, new or movies you've never seen that you, know, that you will never see, Tiffany? The prequel to The Thing. There you go. The Thing. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. From 2011 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. whatever that is. I'm no. never going to watch that. That's fair. I'm That's never fair. going to watch it. Yeah. Uh, Godfather 3 is meh. It's not good, but it ain't like horrible. Although there were scenes where I was like, wow, this is not good. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I have to see the new one. The like, you know, the, the recut or mm. whatever. Uh, the, the, the Coppola cut, if you will. Mm. Uh, it's called something else. Um, and episode 3, I, pro I swore I wouldn't see, but my roommates at the time were like, we'll pay for you to see it. And I'm like, all right, fine. Um, ba Batman and Robin was that movie for me. Then we watched them again, though, thanks to the Rift Tracks guys. Yes, we've seen all of them again and again and again and again, <laughs> thanks to Rift Tracks. Uh, Jake Talenol, uh, every time I see Zack Snyder DC Project, all I see is a man with the perception of an edgy teenager that doesn't want girls to know he's into comics. I mean, his Twitter marketing alone, good God, nothing but gray filters. He does like his gray filters. He does like people to, to know that uh, these comic things that he's working on are pretty cool and rad, and <laughs> definitely you should kiss him. Monochromatic. Uh, yeah. Uh, Brian Rollins, are people really excited for a longer version of a bad DC movie by a guy who did another long bad DC movie because the worst Joker was in the trailer? Uh, when you put it like that, I'm sure it's very uh, it's complicated, <laughs> but uh, I think that I think that a lot of people felt that like because uh, Jared Leto, uh, you know, there's a lot of Oscar buzz around him in general, and he's you know he he used to be a high commodity, uh, you know now he's Morbius. So I'm excited to see his suckers and him demanding plasma. Uh, but before that, people were really high on his Joker, despite the damage across his forehead. And I I am I'm so thankful that he exists. For that alone, for that yeah. contribution to our culture, yes. uh, for that hilarious cartoon that came out like almost a decade ago. Um, wow. Yeah, I know. Overly opinionated, might we get a video on the connection between Kirby leaving Marvel during Thor Ragnarok and the connection to the New Gods? There's some gold in that vein. Uh, Owen likes comics, will do it or something. Or Matt Draper. Like, you know, we don't do those kinds of videos. Like, we'll talk about it, maybe. But it'll be more conversational off the cuff. Yeah. Uh, you know. and, and we kind of talked a little bit about Kirby and his, like, influence on both of the Pantheons when we covered... Um, Mr. Miracle? Mr. Miracle and the Eternals. Yeah, and the Eternals. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we kind of chatted a little bit about some of those, like, connections there and there. Or it's in, true. In there, so... Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, Stuart Flowers, when are you doing the next GBU? Well, the newest GBU actually just came out this past Friday. You can watch it at any time after this show, preferably. Yeah. Where we did a spotlight episode mm -hmm. talking about the uh, the UNICEF comic book solo issue Spider-Man special edition, The Trial of Venom. Right, where you got to learn all about how the law works. Yeah, so you got a, a big, long, boring explanation about the legal system and from Daredevil. And Spider-Man grabs Venom's jaw in a way I never want to see again. Ever again. <laughs> but uh, check that out, it's a lot of fun. And then we'll do, we'll get back to basics with GBU in the mm -hmm. future. Um, the Grey Initiate, uh, with all this excitement for Darkseid, I'm thinking of diving into some new gods. The omnibuses and Absolute Editions are expensive and unwieldy. Do you have any other ideas for where to start? Uh, honestly, if you're looking for a place to like kind of get your footing and be introduced to these characters, you can't go wrong with Mr. Miracle. 
No, it's true. Mr. Miracle does a, a, an interesting job of like giving you a peek. It's, it's not, meta, though. It's less about the new gods and stuff. Like they're in it, and like you do get a feel for them. But I don't know if that's like <sighs> that'll yeah. give you an idea of some of the drama you're going to get into. But the tone, I'd say, is different than a lot. It of is going to be the... uh, very different. Yeah. You know, my recommendation: there is an old trade just called Jack Kirby New Gods, uh, and it collects quite a bit, and it's a very cheaply made trade. I think I even have it. H hang on a second. Uh, I, I, if you're a digital reader, you might have a, an easier time maybe just picking up some of the trades as well. Um, you know, they're a little less unwieldy than some of those larger omnibuses. Not that the omnibuses aren't great, but I feel you. I have a, definitely a couple of larger ones, and they're just they're hard to read. They're awesome and they're impressive and they look great on the shelf. But like when you actually try to read them, they can be hard because you definitely want to not break that spine for sure. Um. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Yeah, there's this. Uh, it's Jack Kirby's New Gods. It's it used to retail for about twelve bucks. Um, it's print. It's black and white, which is kind of fun. Although you you miss that color. Yeah, for um, Kirby stuff for sure. Yeah. Why would they do that? I don't know. Well, because it's DC. Uh, but like, you never know. Like there's, there's stuff like this. You could always get like super cheap, okay. uh, you know, used of course is what I would recommend, but this is a good way to just get your toe wet as far as uh Kirby stuff goes. Um, but yeah. Um, so I, I mean, that's my recommendation. Also, you could read uh cosmic odyssey. That's a fun, very easy way to introduce yourself to the new gods and the Pantheon through the lens of like people like Batman and Superman. Uh, plus for the added bonus, you also get the John Stewart pathos in there. Torin Miklas, I was lucky enough to land an interview with jo Doc Shaner for a school project, currently doing some Ooh. lighting tests while I listen. Nice. Well, continue, and good luck. Uh, Doc's a very friendly guy. Talk about video games. He likes them. Uh, Maddox, Joker lives in a society officially in canon. Yes, uh, apparently that's a thing. Uh, I think it's, like, supposed to be sarcastic and funny. Like, it's supposed to be, like, ironic that he says that, because, you know, it's, like, an anarchist slash mass murderer, you know, complaining that you're in a society. So I think it's supposed to be a joke. Um... Uh, you know, like I, they reprinted it for twenty five dollars. There you go, twenty five bucks. I mean, it's not a, it's not great, but like you know, it still beats an omnibus. You know, if you're if you're not looking to spend too much. Um, Fat Snorlax can't stay, but I wanted to ask you too. Do we live in a society? Have you have we done that joke yet? <laughs> we just did it, Fat Snorlax. But thank you very much, man. Yeah, yeah, we do live in a society. Uh, although sometimes it's hard to tell. <laughs> uh, Tardis made eighty five. Nobody, absolutely nobody. Zack Snyder. I think Batman should drop the f bomb. Also, thanks to Sandman, I've been reading it at work. Yay! That's awesome. I thought you said... When oh, you thanks said, for the Sam. I thought you said, yeah, thanks to Sam. Man. Thanks like, to Sam, man. I'm reading it. Like, well, I mean, technically, that's accurate. I mean, <laughs> even if I read it wrong. <laughs> no, it's... I, I just... I should have read it as well. Yeah. That's awesome. Hooray. Yeah. Uh, Rogelio... That's, that's a fun work read because then you have to... Like, if everyone's like, what are you reading? You're like... <laughs> oh, don't look at it. I mean, you could. Like, here, look at one page. It's dope. Yeah. But a joke... Oh, as yeah, you go... Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Uh, Rogelio Canella, not a comic thing, but you guys give me hope. I'll find a nerdy girl that is as weird as me one day. It's always an opportunity. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of so, them. Some of them are weirder. Yeah. Some of them will outweird you. You'll never know. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> um, let's jump into some books. Uh, by the way, don't forget, hashtag Savage. You can get a, 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 a head sketch of your choosing by Nathan Stockman, whose art is dope. I love his work. I really enjoy his stuff. And I so so if, if I could get a head sketch from him, I would I would get it. Hashtag sad. And it costs nothing. You just got to be here at the end of the show and uh, and be able to give me your information. Um, Josilla, the saddest, angriest cuts of beef. Shank, loin, Snyder. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so yeah, let's jump into it. Uh, there jump are a couple of books. I'm gonna just going to give a quick, very tersory uh, introduction. I do love that cover, but I almost wish it were her in her new costume, but it's still great. It's a King in Black tie and It's Daredevil. Number 27. I get why they didn't. There's more flowy bits on this. Yes. Uh, from Chip Sidarski, Marco Cicchetto, and Mike Hawthorne. Uh, this is yet another like tie-in. It's continuing with King in Black, but Zdarsky knows you know how to do this by now. Uh, he weaves in narrative while also giving you symbiotes and Matt battling with uh, not only the symbiote that has taken over him, but also Null himself. Mm -hmm. uh, good stuff. Nothing's out of character. Also, you get to see Elektra as Daredevil doing her thing. She wields her first Daredevil, her version centric weapon, nice. which is a sigh that blasts as a billy club and becomes like a like a kind of grappling hook. So it doesn't actually work as like a sigh, or maybe it does, but like yeah, 
It's it's very silly, but I loved how it looked. Okay. I was like, yay! That because Electra uses size, right? Like it's just it's that kind of thing. Right. Like that's I totally picture just Chip being like, because Electra uses size, you know. <laughs> it's like yeah, I, I get it. And Daredevil uses Billy claws. And Billy, and he uses Billy claws, but they all explode and and become grappling hooks. Uh, good stuff. The art's okay. The Hawthorne stuff. Eh, there are a couple of like real dips where it's just kind of like the tone does not match the art. Well, but uh, you know, I'd say the biggest problem there is just again the strength of this cover. Yeah, this, the cover's amazing. Especially the color palette, like the whole thing's just fantastic. Agreed. And the story is great. Also, Typhoid well, she's Mary. Got, she's got plenty of flowy things there. I agree. That's what I'm saying. Uh, that would have really cemented that cover. Yeah. In what time period it's in? Right. Yeah. <laughs> not just the King in Black element, yeah, there's but not the a, costume. And you know, there's not enough from the 90s of Daredevil in his 90s costume to mm -hmm. be like, wow, there was like an era. Like, no, they were really like, they're like, we're doing the costume. We don't want to, we want people to think we're going to bring it back. Like mm -hmm. the old stuff. Anyway, great stuff. I love Daredevil. Uh, if you haven't already, pick up issues one through 26. Uh, <laughs> just go grab them. Exactly. Literally, just go buy them all. What I mean, else? you could probably also just get like the trades, but I guess that's fine. Cool. Uh, I guess I'll talk about Justice League a little bit. Okay. Uh, Justice League, no, uh, Future State Justice League number two, and I believe it's the last part, like, ever? I don't know. It doesn't say the end, but it also doesn't say to be continued. It's over. Uh, well, some of them usually say the end. It's uh, it's written by Josh Williamson with art by Ronson Rocha, or Roca. Uh, I gotta tell you, I really enjoyed the Robson? art. Robson? Screw you, DC, and your tiny ass fonts. Let's see here. Robson Roach. Wow, nice font choice. Robson Rocha. Uh, the League learns a lot of lessons and they fight the Hyper Clan. That's the story, and it's fun. Uh, literally, it's because it's only two issues. So, like, compression, thy name is Future State. <laughs> we were done with this. We have to get it out here right you know and let me tell you like it actually is kind of fun in its own way where it's like hey this is what comics used to be like remember when you'd spend like four dollars and get two issues and it's the whole story mm -hmm. and you felt like not gypped because they stretched two issues a story into six or ten issues mm -hmm. uh, and that's what they did here uh williamson of course the master he knows what he's doing he knows his characters despite the fact that they're brand new um but he knows like how to balance it Williamson loves the Justice League and has always wanted to write that book. Yeah. And I'm so glad he was given an opportunity to do that before Bendis took over and is doing his own Justice League. Uh, but this is, a good, this is a good resume. You know, it's like, yo, yo, yo. I mean, I did like a, a hundred issue run on The Flash. Uh, I, I, I saved Wally West. Uh, <laughs> you know, I wrote Infinite Frontier. Uh, I'm part of like the planning board for everything. And I wrote this two-part Justice League story. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and I'm a fun guy. And I'm a fun guy. And I'm a fun guy. I'm nice. I'm friendly. I'm affable. You could, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a good guy. So check it out. But yeah, Justice League, Future State, number two. It's good stuff. I dig it. But there's not the whole story there. There's more to that book. What is it? Oh, the Justice League Dark is in, in the back of that. Because so many of you guys are buying Justice League Dark. They just crammed it at the end of this issue. <laughs> Listen. I enjoyed Justice League Dark for when it was around. Yeah, it was around for a little it while. It was around. Uh, it's written by Ram V with art by uh, Marcio Takara. Ooh, I like Marcio Takara. Art looks great. Um, this, you know what's funny is like, I was like, you know, kind of cold on, not cold, but like I was, I was into the first part of this, but like the second part of it just literally was so well done in my opinion that it actually felt like an event Oh, like a big... Uh, yeah, like a thing that was going on. And it was, epic. And it was done in two issues. And I was like, that's really well done. That's like, cool. That, that's nicely handled. I, it, I feel so, like, badly for Ram V, because it seems like he's the only person right now at DC trying to keep DC magic afloat. Right. Um, you know, we, we well, have... you're handed Batman, you abandon magic. No, that's fair. I, I get it. I get it. Um... But, you know, he's doing Swamp Thing, and, and, you know, he's got Justice League Dark, at least Future State. He was doing Justice League Dark before that. Yes. You know, in this, he clearly has, like, a great respect for Dr. Fate. We've got Etrigan in here, Zatanna, Constantine, Ragman is in here, yeah. Enchantress is in here. Wow, nice. Like, he's just pulling from everywhere. Um, You know, uh, Madame Xanadu is in here. Like, 
Things that we've sense. seen in Justice League Dark obviously have come back through here. You know, classic characters from the Justice League Dark mythos and the DC universe just as a whole. Um, it's just, I, it's just so funny because I'm like, this was fun, and like, you know, no one asked for this obviously, and like, it's totally a story that like is based in nothing. But you get cool visuals like Ragman being a dragon and Zatanna yeah. riding him, and like, More like Dragon Man. <laughs> he's cool looking we're just gonna end the show now mm -hmm. um but you know you get you get these like really super neat in, in, like imagery um it's really at the heart of it about dr fate and honestly about um etrigan and like his struggle with no longer having jason blood and you know being attached to um you know bobo oh, yeah, that's right and the fact that he won't fight back against merlin and why and then it's like it, it a bunch is revealed like the fact that um what you call it jason blood is dead yeah that like merlin killed him like that was part of the deal he had jason blood and that was keeping etrigan off the table yeah dr fate finds out nah it's not true he's dead Etrigan still won't fight, and then, and like the zero hour, he you know goes for it. Right. It turns out, by the way, that like Enchantress is like his Green Knight kind Ooh, of thing. Like she, that's cool. I don't know if that's necessarily what it is, what but like called. she's wearing the like she has green armor because she's Enchantress. Right. Um. I guess. Uh. But also because Merlin associated with Arthur and Arthur, and like that makes me automatically think of the Green Knight. Yeah. Um. But um. <laughs> but essentially, um, like it's revealed at the end that like the blood knight that was like Merlin's right hand man yeah. is Jason blood. Oh, that's cool. Um, and so there is a moment at the end of this, which is like cool fun, but like I've literally seen it before mm. um, in which like Dr. Fate is like, Hey Merlin, I'll make a deal with you. Spare everybody. And you can have the helmet of fate. Cause I know that's what you want. That's the last piece. Mm -hmm. And he's like, like Jason Blood's like, hey, I'm gonna. And Merlin's like, whoa, whoa, hang on, let's let's see her mouth, let's see her mouth. He's like, because I know you can't use it, so I'll go with you. Right. Like Khalid's like, I'll go with you and I'll help you and like let you see into the future. Oh. And everyone's like, that's a terrible idea. What are you doing? <laughs> and he turns to Etrigan and he's like, no, see, like this was all part of the plan. Like I had to like do those things to hide myself and like blah 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 and like keep that secret, but like. With the like the helmet of fate and like this help of another Egyptian goddess, um, I was able to see all the different versions of the future, uh, including this one. And I realized mm. that in this one, we still don't win. Oh, I was like, oh, and that's where we do the heel turn from the the Doctor Strange yep. moment of like, you know, I've looked at the future and like this, this is the, the only, only one where we can win. Yeah, no, this is the one we, we lose, we lose. But hey, the key here is that like you are a demon and you could still affect the past. And like, if you change the past, then like maybe we can save the future okay. and then it's over. Cool. Like that's it. It's literally just like, Hey, this universe kind of sucks. Right. Let's, let's go. F let's hope that it's, another one. This is, this it. one for me very much just felt like a, like a, a what if. Yeah. And like in that, I feel like it's very competently done because yeah. it's like, it kind of gives you everything you need to know while like leaving there's like huge holes where you're like how do we even get here but like it's like because we but you don't need to, to know like it, like i feel like you didn't it doesn't matter yeah you know like the story does it really well like at, at revealing itself right and revealing what you need to know and allowing you to kind of fill in the blanks that's cool i like that because like sometimes you don't need an excruciating scene of like the justly dark crossing the desert and just like hilarious sequences that are like sure. the same face over and over again yeah. where they're like making jokes like you yeah just cut to the chase where is the chase and how do i right well especially for like this two issue especially like it's only two issues you go we're done where else were they going to cram this book <laughs> swamp thing but that's over now too. my question is well, how are these going to be collected you can't I, give me a two book I, trade i assume it's just going to be future state right and it's just future state volume one two three four five mm -hmm. and you'll pick up the ones that, that sucks you because like they have that timeline that doesn't make any freaking sense. So it's like, is it going to be an order? Is it how? how I is bet it they'll be out? like maybe they'll future be like Batman. All yeah, Batman I bet it's going to be Future State Batman, and then maybe like I don't know. I don't know how they'll do the other ones, but like this one will. This one could stand on its own. Like it could be thrown in anywhere. It won't matter. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the Swamp Thing one. You just throw it in. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, honestly, but, like, it, was, it was fun. Yeah, I, I had a good time. That's cool. I did too. So I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> Uh, let's go into some super chats, uh, but before we do, hashtag Savage, you want a free head sketch from Nathan Stockman, original artist of a character you're choosing on a variant cover from Savage number one on sale this Wednesday. Uh, use the hashtag Savage in the chat. 
Uh, I'll, eat, I'll uh, You have to stay until the end of the show in order to win, though. Yes, that's that's uh, key. You can't just be like savage and then leave for the day, or you will automatically fail. Uh, Al Al Ziadi <laughs> says, "Weird question, but in a backish episode where Ben confused an image character costume for the Vulture, who was that character? And what episode was? It? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't. I don't well, remember maybe, every maybe episode. Chat does. If the chat, the, the, you guys are way better at remembering episodes than I do. For me, like they're all the same episode." It's just one never-ending episode. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I'm sorry, but yeah, you're, you're, you're also. I've seen this done before. People usually post on the subreddit to ask that, uh, Ooh, and a lot of people do that too. Right, just some guy with the mustache says Darkhawk. Mm, he probably did think it was Darkhawk. I mean, Darkhawk looks like every image character, um, but we all know that Dan Larson of Toy Galaxy created Darkhawk. Uh, Love line with Adam and Drew says back issues is the most brilliant format ever conceived of for sharing comic books with other people. Thank you very much, man. It's very, very it's high really, praise. Really Thank sweet. you. Sal, Tiffany, uh, Ethan, and Ben are all uniquely hilarious, charming, and fun. I spent most of 2020 watching Comic Pop. Thank you. Thank you, oh, man. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the great commercial for us. We really appreciate it. I'm going to use that and just post it on Twitter and stuff. It's Done. really, really helpful. Thank you, man. And thank you for your, for your kindness and for sharing with us. Uh, Nick Bledsoe says, Hey, y'all, longtime fan. Love the content. I haven't caught you guys live in a while because of work. I don't understand why we have seen Joker in a promo before we see either Green Lantern or Martian Manhunter. I feel like it's because, you know, Green Lantern and Martian Manhunter aren't, like, filmed. Like... They're CG. I, I mean, they're gonna, they're done. The, the thing's coming out soon, so it's like that's all done. But like, they had to shoot Jared Leto. You know, like Martian Manhunter and Green Lantern are CG characters. They, they might be working on that all the way up until right Probably before the release. Probably because they're not making this movie for fans of Green Lantern and Martian Manhunter. They're making, they're making it. it for Batman fans <laughs> and, for, and for Zack Snyder fans and for fans who were like, I fucking couldn't wait for for Suicide Squad, and it turns out it's lame. But I thought it was going to be awesome, and the most awesome part about it was Joker. Yeah. Who also got, like, cut out of that movie a lot, too. Sure. But yeah. So my guess is they were just like, it's exciting to see Joker. And, like, I think, I, I remember hearing a rumor that uh, Zack Snyder said something to the effect of, like, I need, like, one of the things he just shot that, like, was not part of the Snyder Cut, that he, like, shot specifically for this, was the Joker. Because he felt like, if he's gonna, if he's never gonna do another, probably Warner Brothers movie ever again. Um... I wanted to see Batman and Joker interact because they never get to in this universe. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, fair enough. Can't argue with that, I guess. Uh, so yeah. Oh, let's well, move on. Yeah. Uh, dark detective, uh, future state number three, uh, future state dark detective number three. It's the other Batman book. It's of course, Mariko Tamaki and Dan Mora. The Dan Mora art is great. The Tamaki writing is fun. Uh, it's hilarious because this is supposed to be like an older Bruce Wayne. He's not like Dark Knight Returns old. He ain't Batman Beyond old. He's more like two years in the future older. Like it's, he's drawn virtually indistinguishably from real Bruce Wayne and future state Bruce Wayne. Like, you right. know, there's no difference in his Yeah. Uh, but he, she ironically writes a more youthful voice for Bruce in this than I've ever heard him in a long time. Oh, Maybe she maybe, just infuses. Yeah, maybe, maybe his failure has just you know has brought him back from the brink. It's really youthened him. Yeah, he's just like, oh, this is like when I was training. I, I remember like you know having nothing. Yeah, yeah, you know, except for the fact that I could go home to my safety net of Alfred. In my yeah, but he didn't do that right away. <laughs> remember, no, he also know, trained and stuff. But like, <laughs> I, I agree. Uh, I, I will say that like I remember I was very, I was very high on this book because I liked the idea of seeing Batman like retrain. Yeah, and like in an unfamiliar place. I am a little disappointed in the idea that he does use more tech. You know, like, I see him... Yeah, but he but he is cannibalizing it from other tech, but, like, you know, he needed to see something from far away, and he uses these, like, special tech things that he makes. And he's like, ah, my tech isn't what it used to be. I wish I had more tech. And I'm like, I appreciate that, but I kind of wanted to see, like, a Batman who's set against this, techno this technopolis, and he's, like, grabbing things and pulling them apart and being like, I can't see from that far away. I just he, need to go he's over got, there. Like a telescope, like a pirate. Right, like a like, pirate. He's like, yo ho. I, I don't know. I thought that'd be kind of fun. But, I can't see shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm older, and also I don't have I'm access older. to my stuff. Yeah, I don't know. It, otherwise, no complaints. It's just <laughs> it's watching Batman try and take down the magistrate. There's a mystery. He's a detective. This is the issue where where Tamaki's like, oh right, I this. Should, this series is literally he's called a detective I got he, we got a detective he needs something. to detect so like a, a billionaire gets murdered and he's like why <laughs> and I'm like no 
<laughs> you are trying to take down the magistrate. You do not give a shit. But what's funny is, of course, you know this book is like over in one more issue or something. Yeah. So like, my guess is the the murder of this billionaire will tie directly into take it, the toppling the magistrate. Sure. And he'll pull this one thread, you know, via his detection and figure it all out. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, it's fun. And like, you know, the, the noose is tightening on Batman's obscurity and anonymity. <laughs> and he bumps into the next Batman. And it's like that time when Spawn showed up in an issue of Shadowhawk. Like... Man, it all comes back to Shadowhawk. It always does. Uh, who is not to be confused with Darkhawk, who we just talked about. Oh, Which right. may have been the actual thing, and only because we naturally had that conversation. Oh, that's weird. But, like, <laughs> in, in, in the Shadowhawk, I want to say it's number eight, I don't remember, though. Uh, Shadowhawk is, like, dealing with an arsonist, and Spawn shows up, for, and, and he's on the cover. And I remember, like, Wizard Magazine was like, you gotta buy this, Spawn's in it. It's the hottest issue of Shadowhawk yet. He's in two panels. Spawn shows up, he's like, there's an arsonist. Are you dealing with him? And Shadowhawk's like, yeah. And Spawn's like, cool. And he leaves. That's how this is. Oh, okay. Next Batman shows up and he's like, hey, Batman. And Batman's like, hey, Batman. And then they leave. And you're like, okay. Batman, Batman. I think that if you were buying this and this was the current continuity, yeah. it would it would be exactly the same, but maybe be more exciting or maybe you'd be like, you'd feel more let down. I don't know. Either way, it's just cheap. That's like, that's like that moment in Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, when they run into their counterparts. Yeah, like the super successful team runs into the actual protagonists of the movie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's fun. The art makes it even better. But the writing is still is still solid, and I'm looking forward to seeing Tamaki's work on a main bat title. Ooh! Uh, but no complaints is, about this is book. Is Dan going to that as well? He better. They would be they'd be very stupid not to bring him. <laughs> I mean, the fact Maybe is, maybe Jim Lee's like, "Hey, I went back in." Right? Yeah. No. <laughs> There's no way. I'm in. Don't fire me. Yeah. <laughs> you can't fire me. I'm an executive. Oh, look at all the executives who've been fired. Uh, Rab L, uh, been on an old back issues binge. Amazing content. Thanks, Rab. Aw, thank you. Wolf Dragon Musima helping us out. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very Wolf much. Wolf Dragon, good name. Uh, and let's move on. Next book. What do you got? Oh, I guess what I read this week, everybody. If you guessed the X titles, then you're correct. Oh. They were all good. Right. The ones I read this week. I don't know where to start. Let's start X-Force. That's probably the one everyone actually wants to hear about. So let's not start X-Force. No. <laughs> I'm <laughs> learning. Let's talk about Sword. Sword, Sword. Number, Sword, Sword number, number three. three came out. It's a tie-in. Um, it's written by Al Ewing with art by uh, Valero Skeety, good. Ray Anthony Height, Bernard Chang, Wh- and Nico Leon. What? That's four artists. Yeah, I actually really didn't even notice. Oh, cool. Um... It's probably early on in the book. That's weird. Um, I guess to get it out on time. I I don't know, but there's like this gorgeous page. Whoa! <laughs> Who's the colorist on this book? Uh, fine question. The colorist is uh, Marte Gra- Gracia. Oh, Marte Gracia! I know that name. Spectacular coloring on this book. They're good. I I uh, utterly spectacular. Um, if you are a fan of Manifold, this was the <laughs> issue you wanted to pick up. Well, it, I think Manifold's on the cover. It's all about Manifold. Oh, sweet! It's actually it's a cool it's a cool Manifold is a neat idea that I never know anything about, so I'm gra- I'm glad he's getting his due. Yeah, well, this is interesting because they're like this is a tie into King and in Black technically. Yeah, <laughs> but we just listen. We're just gonna do our sword issue. Just started, and two issues are tie-ins. So one of the two issues are going to be like more aimed at trying to push this story along yeah and that very much is what we do right um basically manifold like we get a little more explanation like manifold has like a mission to do but he wants to make a quick stop yeah and he wants to stop in australia okay which is where manifold is from right i was gonna say isn't he from there but i didn't want to sound like i like i was talking yeah my no ass. he's he's like a, a native of australia yeah um and so like, he starts to talk to his uncle and just to like kind of check in and like essentially it's like you know you know the this venom or this null presence is everywhere yes however like they're like seemingly not in australia like at least not in that area like okay. it's, it's covered or like there's no stars in the sky kind of thing mm-hmm. but they're like they don't want to come here yeah i'm like that's right it's more deadly there but that like there it's confirmed though as like I've, every article i saw about this book Oh, there were articles about this issue? Literally just because it was like, uh, it's confirmed that uh, Australia still loves its X-Men. 
and that like Australia still will back the X Men regardless of how the rest of the world might feel about them. Okay. And Krakoa right now. All right, cool. Um, there's a character in this, like honestly, like I knew who Baz was, who's Manifold's uncle, mm-hmm. but there's another gentleman. There's an older gentleman. His name's Sammy, mm-hmm. and like he knows Iron Man. Okay. And so like I was desperately trying to piece together who this might be, but he's in it for like three panels, so it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Manifold then leaves and goes on his on his mission, which is to try to gain assistance for Earth mm. to help with Null, and so he goes uh, to where to the Zinrix. Okay. They're like, they're lizard people. Ah. They've been warring forever. It's part of the Snark War. Essentially, it's like the leader of their people has perished and like all of their children know that. And so they're all fighting each other to gain favor. They steal powers to like help themselves. Yeah. And so he comes to them being like, listen to one of the brothers. And I was like, listen, you have no planet. Right. And so I know you're like kind of screwed. And like everyone else is probably protecting their planet from null right now thinking Mm -hmm. that he like you know might come and get them but you don't have one so we'll trade two of our mutants powers they volunteered okay for you to come help us all right seemingly i don't know if they actually have their powers or not i don't know but it was like they're like no we're down okay but regardless like they want to do this and he's like yeah thing about that is i don't have a planet like you said and like my sister who was actually like my biggest threat did and null took care of her planet he killed like this resource that she had Mm. and so like why would i kill null when he helped me basically because i don't have a planet (laughs) he didn't do it on purpose it wasn't like null was like i'm gonna help this guy right but like his his actions do help and so he's like i'm not going to help you with null yeah he's like null can kill everybody and then like i'll just build up from that and okay all right and like manifold's like Cool. Enjoy your your forever war. Right. I hope it brings you joy. <laughs> and like he's like joy. That's the Earth word for for snark or snark war or whatever. Whatever, buddy. But then like off panel, we see like a blade show up and is like, "Hey, it's time to die." <laughs> and that lizard guy dies. Okay. Off panel, you're like, okay, cool. Right on. Um, Manifold goes to his next stop, which is the Alpha Flight Space Station. Mm. Where he's looking for Peter Gyrick, Henry Peter oh, Gyrick. No. He's like, we got to get him. Okay, yeah. He's got to help out. So he shows up in like his dark office. He's like, hello? <laughs> Are you here? Right? Is anybody here? Nobody's. Well, he seemingly nobody is here. And then is he hears. Abandoned? Then he hears a conversation going on. And like the conversation starts off with like, deal properly with the Krakoan problem. He's like, oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what he sees is like, Gyrick is like walking down the hall, having a conversation with someone on the phone about how like, you know, like we gotta we figure out what we're doing, like you know, with this and like how we're going to deal with it, and like since I'm the acting commander of Alpha Flight, I'm also in charge of like Gamma Flight and all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Is that even still a thing? I guess it is. <laughs> um, and so then manifold, we get a little explanation by Abigail Brand via like notes mm-hmm. in between like him doing certain actions of how his powers work, and that like he doesn't teleport. And, like, that's the thing people misunderstand, right. apparently. Is okay. that, like, he doesn't just teleport. He communicates with space. And, like, can tell space to, like, fold in a way which allows him to travel places. Gotcha. Okay. And she's like, if you ask him about it, he'll say he's asking space. But, like, mm. it's scary to think about, and I try not to. <laughs> but that, like, he can ask it to, like, fold around him to make him invisible or what have you. Oh, cool. Create, like, a little pocket for him to slip into. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what he does. In his office, so he can hear the rest of the conversation. Mm. So he has, like, a file, and, like, you know, he's like, yeah, no, I got, like, the plans, and blah, 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 and, like, I got the redacted version, naturally. And he's like, no, I didn't print it out. I'm not that stupid. He's, like, literally holding it in his hand. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. So he, like, drops it on the desk, so, like... He takes he takes a look at it, and we're back to the Orcus Protocol. Yeah, got and I'm like, damn, I have not seen that in a while. Forever, yeah, that's awesome. Good. (laughs) Um, So, like, he's like, oh, no. So... Gyrick goes on and on about like you know like how like humanity is losing at the race and like nobody's like people are starting to notice that and blah 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 blah, and like Mm -hmm. we're gonna have to do something and he leaves Mm. and he misses one very key piece of information Mm. Gyrick says my mole and sword only tells me so much oh no so now we know there's a traitor in sword but they don't know that but they don't know that because he left right like damn it so Manifold immediately returns. He's like, listen, like we got some we got some issues here. And he explains that like Gyrick is like clearly working with Orcus because he saw the org chart and like, you know. <laughs> and like Brand is like, 
I get that that's a problem, but we have a way bigger problem because literally no one has returned from when we sent people down to Krakoa right. to deal with Null. And I can't talk to anyone. And like, so I need you to go down there and get them and find out what's going on. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, yeah, okay. So he goes through the portal and what does he see? But Cable, like, nullified. <laughs> yeah. Um, With all of his, like, the team. And right, Magneto, right, right. like, strung up in a creepy tree. Oh, cool. And that's where we leave it. That, didn't we leave it last time with... That's what reveal? I felt like, too. But, like, that's why, to me, like, this is like Ewing being like, I technically need to, like, continue the storyline, but I really need to establish certain things that, like, S.W.O.R.D. is actually going to be about dealing with, like, other threats yeah. to, like, Krakoa, including the fact that, like, you know, Henry Peter Gyrick has his spy in... S.W.O.R.D. In S.W.O.R.D. Orcus is still a problem, and, yeah. like, we need to deal with that. So I'm like... I kind of get it. I did feel like this was just kind of spinning its wheels in terms of its involvement with King and Black, yeah. but just waiting for it to be over. Kind of, if that's what it feels like. But like, I I like this series, and yeah, yeah. I I kind of just enjoyed hanging out with Manifold for a little bit. It was fun, and like that page of him going as he puts it everywhere, mm -hmm. as like he makes his way to Australia is just it's gorgeous. Yeah. The coloring on that is just spectacular. That's awesome. So, Let's look them up some more. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to mention that Wolf Dragon Musima also made a comment, and I don't know if it was connected, but since he did do a super chat, I'm going to read it anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. During the current times, back issues in Good Dragon and Ugly have been the most entertaining thing I've watched. Oh. Also, has kept me has, has kept me maintaining my sanity during the lockdown. Oh, well, thank you. Thank, thank much, you for man. sharing that with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, here we go. Uh, Nathaniel Decker, how much does liking a video help you? In what way does liking help? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's a mystery. Uh, <laughs> it's a mystery, but it seems like something that needs to be done. And yeah. so... Uh, here's the thing. According to uh, YouTube and YouTube people, uh, you know, they don't know... They, they know everything, but they don't know how to, like, warrant channels getting in front of the people who subscribe to them. So... Well, rather than use subscribers and subscriptions to do that, they also use, like, likes. And so if a video has, like, a proportionate amount of likes to views, which is unheard of, that apparently puts it up on, like, a higher echelon of priority. But this is all speculation. Like, no one at YouTube, and I've, talk I've talked to MCNs and YouTube people, like people who work for the company, and nobody can give me a straight answer about it. I always assumed it had to do with the fact that we've gotten comments before on videos of people being like, I didn't see this in my list. Yeah. Like, this didn't show up. So I do wonder if it helps to push those this out This is true. There. Like, if you have, like, a hundred subscriptions, like, if you're subscribed to, like, just a ton of channels, mm -hmm. um, you, you will probably notice that YouTube doesn't show you them all. And uh, even if you click, like, the bell to, no to get notified, uh, you don't know. And, uh, so if you, but if you like more of those videos, you'll probably get notified or at the very least see more of them in your feed than you would normally. I will also say that, uh, having looked at some of our analytics, I will say that I think 15% of our viewers are actually subscribed to this channel. Well, not subscribe, the bell thing, right? No, no, no. Subscribe. Oh, I And was... then also, oh no, and then there's 10% that are, cl that have clicked the bell and get, and, thought... and got notified. That would not the numbers you tell me well, it's actually, yeah, it's pretty bad. But, like, we do get apparently, like, 100,000 or more unique viewers per week. Hooray! Uh, Hello, unique nice. viewers. Hello. Uh, subscribe, because... You neeked up on us. Yeah, yeah. And, uh... I had a... I had a it's yeah, that's fair. A really tough... But, yeah, but I do, I do want to use this opportunity mm -hmm. to, tell, to let you know. If you want to help us out in a big, bad way, and you're not subscribed to, like, more than 100 channels... Even if you aren't, subscribe anyway. But subscribe and click the bell and get notified to get notifications. So I promise you, you're only getting it like three notifications per week. Um, so yeah. Uh, Noah Koo, how have how have you guys read JL8? Yes. I know Yale Stewart, not biblically, but we've met on a number of occasions. When we first started, we, uh, you know, we hit the convention scene. He was there a lot. Yeah. And uh, we chatted with him a little bit. And uh, we loved it back when it was called... Uh, what was it called before JL8? I don't remember. Little don't... League. It's called Little League. I don't remember. All I know is like I know there's a little controversy. There is a little bit of controversy there's, about him. There's some controversy about him. But um, he is he is But I, regardless yeah. of that, like I I the concept behind it I love. I love the art the execution. and I, the there's like a specific 
like panel from yep. that that I adore the most. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, Power Girl. Power Girl fawning over Bruce. Yeah. Uh, by the way, that's Call, a great pairing. Calling him dapper. Yeah. <laughs> or no, just is Bruce. I think it's. I thought it was um, Clark. Yeah. 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 He looks dapper. Yeah. I was um, like, oh. Yeah. Uh, that that would have been a great idea for DC to have like set them up. So cute. Uh, Velton Grajficki. I'm sorry. He just calls a big fan. He, he says he's a big fan, and I said his name wrong. Oh. Uh, Venton <laughs> says, uh, hey, Silent Tip, big fan. I was wondering, Thank has you. there ever been a comic book movie you've walked out on much love from the ATL? Thank you, uh, Vent Venton. Um, I'm sorry about your name. Uh, it's a great name. I just can't say it. Um, but as far as walking out on a comic book movie, have I ever? I mean, like, I've never sat down and watched all of Batman and Robin. Um, <laughs> I have. <laughs> like, I did not. I have. It was like on TV. Yeah. So it was like one of those where I was like, eh, it's here. I'll watch scenes and then go, that's enough. No, I've seen the whole thing beginning, middle, and end. Woof. Yeah. Um, well, if you think about it, who's in it? Arnold. No, but who are the, the main <laughs> villains in that? Uh, Mr. Freeze and Poison Ivy. Who are my favorite Batman villains? Yeah, those two. They got done dirty. Yes, they did. <laughs> yeah, but John Glover's in that movie. And uh, I don't know if you could see, but we like him a lot. There's a, there's a signed photo of him down there somewhere. Anyway, yes. uh, yeah. Did we walk out on any other ones? I don't think I, I've never, I, I don't think I've ever walked out on a movie. I have. We did. Domino. I wasn't there for that. Oh, well, I did. Uh, that was not me. I was after, I was like two thirds away through Domino, and I'm like, I gotta stop. Uh, Raj Patel, I'm glad Sword is being written by Ewing. He can successfully weave in King and Black to his greater cosmic plots. Can't wait to see what he has for us next. Stay warm, you too, Raj. Thank you very much, man. Cubenix can't stay for the whole episode at work. We'll catch the rest later. Snyder Cut looks like a different film, which is good. I'm optimistic. Thumbs up. I think a lot of people are on the same page as you, man. Noah Koo, and to what? And do we need a Snyder-directed JL8 adaptation? Uh, we don't, but, like, I can't wait for it. It's going to be great. Because uh, that's what Snyder needs to do next, is take the DC properties and just age them down. Uh, young Goku over 9,000. Hey, y'all, I got my first check at the new job, and I'm feeling the best way to use it. Oh, my gosh. Boring. Thank you, man. That's very, very generous of you. Congratulations. Make sure you save those pennies, though. That's right. Uh, does Trust it... me. It's, it's, like, not an easy thing to do, but, like, one day you're going to thank yourself for That's it, right. even if it's just a little bit. Yeah. Trust me. Does it feel like DC didn't realize Future State would be a success? Also, are there any modern Nightwing runs that are bangers? Tom Taylor, save us, please. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, a lot of people like Tom King's run on Grayson. Uh, the Nightwing Bloodhaven series is celebrated. I think that's Dixon. Um, so, yeah, there. I mean, like, there's there's more good runs on Nightwing than bad. I, and I feel like with Future State, it, it feels like they're happy to find that some characters have succeeded. But I feel like DC's kind of like, they just threw everything out there. Yeah. And they just didn't know. Like, they're just like, I don't know, maybe something will work. Right. But, like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, they definitely didn't plan on it, but I think they were hoping it would be a success. I think if it was 5G, it would not have been a success. And I don't think this is even a success. I think it's just, it's doing, it's 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 not tanking. No, and but I think some books are proving to be successful in terms of, like, you know, either new characters or, like, new writer-artist teams yeah. that people are like, oh, right. oh. Well, they're good. Yeah. Jake Tylenol, in my opinion, Zack Snyder takes all the wrong lessons from the stories he seems to be inspired from. It feels like he uses these overly serious tones almost as a crutch to give the illusion he's saying something. Uh, I've heard that lobbied against him before. Uh, I can't find much to dis to disagree with you. Um, yeah, uh, he, he certainly wants to make it feel like you're watching a big boy movie. Uh, Joshua Stevens, as much as I'd love a Fabok drawn Marvel DC main event, Dan Mora's body of work has been wanting the executives at the big two to get out of their own way and have a Zdarsky Mora greenlit. Ooh. Hashtag savage. I agree, man. I'd love to see yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine any of these people working today? An Asad Ribic, a Chichetto, a Dan Mora, um, doing a, bar a Marvel DC crossover. Any of these characters would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd also just be cool with like, just like, Zdarsky and Mora doing something, whether it be like a Daredevil or a Spider Man, or you know what I mean. Like, Agreed. Let Mora go over to the other side for a yeah. little bit. Let him do both. Yeah, he, he can do it all. Uh, Sean D. G. Uh, so Sean D. Chill, Sal. I'm trying, man. Thank you. Uh, Cliff Elor uh, wanted to know why you did you stop writing your own book? If you don't mind me asking, just curious due to the fact you're very knowledgeable. Thank you for Cliff. Uh, it's not that I stopped writing it; I ended it uh, with Garth Kirby. I didn't have a better idea. Uh, that's my book on comicsology and with Flight of the Bintrong, which is our webcomic, flightofthebintrong.com. Check it out. Um, 
Uh, I finished the story, and I didn't want to... Uh, the, the main reason is because it costs money. It costs a lot of money to make your own book. Uh, it costs all of the money. Like, any, uh, whatever comic book costs, that's how much you gotta pay. Mm-hmm. And you gotta pay it yourself. Yeah. Uh, because it's not fair, and it's bullshit to offer an artist exposure, or to promise them a percentage of sales. Because, no. like, number one, sales will be zero. Number two, uh, you are you will not get an artist that's worth a damn to do it. Or if you do, the artist is not bound by any kind of obligation to finish the project right, like it's just it's also like that's their career you have to pay them for yeah that. you don't value their work you got to pay them a value um but yeah I, I just didn't have the time or the money especially back then when we first launched comic pop slash stopped making comics i couldn't afford any of those things <laughs> like i couldn't afford it it was like it was like two or three grand a book and it's like there's no way like i can't afford that <laughs> Uh, especially with Flight of the Venturon, where it wasn't a book. It was designed as a comic, a webcomic. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, I'm 10 years late to the webcomic scene again. So, like, can't do that. That's not going to make us any money. Um, and it's not all about making money, but it's at least about trying to make make it break even, where it's like, oh, it'd be great to get keep that strip going. And it's like, if we're not making anything. It's just me getting further and further into debt, which is not going to work for anybody. Right. Um, but thank you, man. I, I I would like to get back into it. We're We're trying some new things. We'll see. Uh, John Broussard, uh, if they go do, if they do the manipulator route with Wanda, I hope they make it Dormammu instead of Mephisto. Fighting the devil is such a <laughs> jump the shark, and Dormammu needs to be more than a big ugly head in MCU. Be, I be okay. So yeah, I I, I agree with the because like so many people are like it's Mephisto, it's this, right. and I'm like that's just such a like yeah you don't you can't just you can't just say it's the devil you can't just introduce Mephisto without something else to back it up and right. i know you could be like yeah but ghost rider didn't and it's like yeah but ghost rider was also its own universe yeah its own thing nicholas cage literally flaming skull guy you know what i mean like yeah. it, it's an easier leap to get to the devil from that mythos yeah which we haven't really introduced in the mcu that's the thing we did it of course a little bit in shield but shield doesn't count for anything in terms nope. of what they're doing right now yeah um with Dormammu, maybe I would also not that I want to take this away from Doctor Strange at all, but it'd be cool if it were Nightmare. Oh yeah, that'd be cool because Nightmare's supposed to be in the new Doctor Strange movie. Yeah, so it'd be a great way to establish him, especially if Juan is going to be in Doctor Strange too. Right, or like maybe we don't know exactly who it is, or but we hint at the idea that it is Nightmare. But I agree with you that I they I wish they hadn't used Dormammu out of the gate. Like, that yeah. was such a misstep in my opinion, but I'm sure they thought maybe we're not going to get another one, but it, there's... That's just... That's a shame to me. I yeah. know, like, Nightmare is definitely, like... It, he's one of Strange's big bads, but, like, the idea of, like, if you're a Doctor Strange fan, knowing that Dormammu's lurking and, like, waiting in the wings of the Dark Dimension and that you're working towards that, yeah. that's exciting and that's dope. Agreed. But, like, he's... We already saw him. There he is. Yep. And he looks ridiculous yeah i mean it's supposed to look ridiculous but like you know a little more than usual yeah uh the super casual pleb is giving us an adorable gif of a corgi giving us the number it's one flag a it's a shiva, it's a shiva we do this Inu, every sorry. time <laughs> whatever uh but thank you very much thank you so support. much i love it i uh, love i love these little like these little gifts these little, yeah, these little moving guys little i love them too dude. uh sean d what killed the dinosaurs uh me 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 <laughs> uh kweku akaye says have you guys seen the new team for ewing's guardians uh i've seen the brett booth like multiple team roster art which is cool looking uh the big thing is like i think doom's on the team okay that's the 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 that the art i saw suggests maybe to me that no gonna, one knows what the hell they're doing maybe anymore. they're gonna deal with doom the evil living planet yeah i think aaron's gonna put pull that out <laughs> i'm sure but yeah no he's like hey that's bullshit i'm doom yeah no well he's he becomes a little living planet so he'll be like i gotta merge with with ego Jalen Fanning, hey guys, has anyone thought maybe baron mordo could be behind wandavision all the end of dr strange he was talking about taking people's magic yeah, I think I think Marvel's done using him. <laughs> like, I think if he shows up anywhere, it'll be Doctor Strange. That's too. so because he's not anywhere. That's like that's so sad. Yeah, because Shuttle Edge Four is a great actor. He is. Baron Mordo is like one of Doctor Strange's main villains. Yeah, you know what it is. They definitely like they they nailed some things with Doctor Strange, and they definitely just went completely different ways with other things that yeah. didn't really set them up, in my opinion, to do certain key moments. Yes. Like they're gonna have to twist things and and. Like reorient things and reorganize them to make some things work but yep. 
hey, they're thinking about putting Rintra in there. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty great. Before Clea, too. Good idea. It's fine. Colin Dolby, can you deep dive the Sandman before it hits TV? Love from UK. We Maybe. did volume one. Maybe. I don't I think... Here's the thing. What you're going to get from the Sandman TV show is you're definitely going to get the Sandman story, but Neil has made it abundantly clear that, like... He has no love for it, so he's no, just going to do whatever he wants. No, he does have a love for it, but that I, he has made it clear that he's going to change some things. Yeah. Like, whether it be, like, the nature of certain characters... Genders, races, that doesn't matter. But I also but it, think that he's going to change some plot points. Big time. Because he has to update it. Yeah. And so... I... I we could talk about it for sure, but... And I think there will be, like, there's going to be connections and things are going to, like, definitely go in that flow. But, like, I think it's going to be, you know, just a different take on Sandman. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, I don't know if it's going to be more helpful or less helpful to know what it was. Right. Or some people are going to be like... <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dakari Garman, for always being great. Keep on rocking with a bicep. Thank you very much, uh, Dakari. I have, appreciate I, it. Man. I struggled to get my water bottle open. I need to do something <laughs> with, my, with my ability to be athletic. <laughs> Alex Cash gives us a T. Yay! Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maybe Alex. there's more somewhere in there. There might be more. I'll try to find you. Uh, but thank you very much, man, for your support and for everything. We really appreciate it, dude. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Transact guy, will the Corridor wear comic pop shirts? Absolutely not. There's no way we, they know who we are, nor do they like what we do. Uh, we, we travel in very different circles. I don't even know them. It's not even like... Uh, you know, like Jack uh, Packard, who we've worked together, you know, where it's like there might, you know, there might be a sticker somewhere in that office. Like, no, mm -hmm. no, no, no. The corridor guys don't know me. I just watch their shows and go like, oh, mm -hmm. teach me more about, about special effects. <laughs> uh, Transact. Oh, he asked that question. Thank you very much. And just some guy with a mustache. Quill, why is he here? Philovel, this is an Iron Man. <laughs> Doing with a Frank mustache. I'm Doctor Strange. Philovel, oh, hi, Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. That's great. Quill's just like, <laughs> thank you alex J no just a tea enjoy Yay. it thank you like uh, that tea. So what else we got uh let's talk about excalibur all right excalibur it is excalibur came out this week um and you know was cool yay um <laughs> it deals with the return of of uh betsy braddock it's written by teeny howard with art by marcus tell yay um and essentially rogue's like is that really her right or is it like a different one yeah and, like, Rachel's there, and she's like, yeah, I think it's her. I mean, it looks like her. But, like, I really can't go that deep into her mind because she don't want me to right now. Okay. Because, like, she, come on, she, she needs a minute. Yeah. Rogue's like, yeah, but, like, we're, like, besties, and I got to tell you right now, that, that woman down there standing on the water scares me. Mm. And that should not be. Like, yeah. that's not how it should go down. Right. So, basically, Rogue's plan is, like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. No, no, I'm sorry. Rachel's plan is, give me your hand. And, oh, rogues? Yeah. Oh. And you can take some of my powers. And then I'm going to go back to Krakow because I don't want to hang out here. <laughs> and you can just keep I'm missing mind. out on an orgy right now. Yeah. <laughs> I really need to go. Um, she's like, I'm not in this book, so i got to leave. And, <laughs> Even though I'm literally a member of Excal. Yeah, but like, I don't want to be... A, I, listen, you guys got weird. Teeny Howard wants to use a different team. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not part of this. But wait, wait. The, Rachel's like me and Kurt and Megan and... Megan shows up in this book for a second, too. <laughs> and Kunlun are all going to go over there and hang out. She, <laughs> um, Cunlan. Yeah, there's a guy named Cunlan, I think. Oh. It's like named after the place. Oh, okay. Um, but anyway, so then Emma shows up and is like, you were hiding Betsy from us. What gives? Mm. We really needed her because they're trying to deal with other world deaths and the idea that like, um, maybe they could work with, uh, Saturnine to like prevent that from occurring mm -hmm. or do something about that so they send like a decree to her to be like hey could we come and chat with you or have you come to us and she's like she angrily requests her quill and yeah. parchment and sends a letter that's like unfortunately no because like i've got a lot going on and honestly what normally would happen would be you would send your questions to captain britain but you guys don't have one right now mm. so no we won't be talking <laughs> <laughs> god I'm damn like, it you're just God, mm. you're in this book for like two panels. And I'm like, I hate you. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> um, But Emma's like, but we do have a Captain Britain. So we could be like, let's go. And they're like, listen, she's had a rough couple days. Yeah. And like Rogue's like, I don't even know if it's her. Right. Right. So they're kind of like a big family dinner. Like, you know, Richter and Gambit and Rogue and Jubilee and Shogo and Gambit's 12,000 cats. Yeah. Um, and they keep trying to invite Betsy up, but she won't come up. And then Betsy's niece wanders through the portal mm. that's there. And is like, oh, 
and runs back through and gets Brian. Oh, yeah. Because it goes to other world. And yeah. so, like, I guess, like, Brian and his family are living over there. Okay. And he's like, where's my sister? <laughs> and everyone's like, okay. Okay. So, I didn't tell you about this mm -hmm. because we didn't know if it was her. Right. Or, and he's just really upset. And then Megan shows up. She's like, what's happening? <laughs> Why am I in this book? <laughs> Why am I here? All right, I'm taking my daughter and we're leaving right. this book. <laughs> <laughs> So Brian decides he's going to, like, chill at the lighthouse and, like, just, you know, see if his sister wants to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And, like, Rogue's like, yeah, no, it's just she doesn't seem like herself. And he's like, you don't think it's her? And she's like, am I crazy? And he's like, no, it right. doesn't seem like it's her. Okay, cool. And she's like, okay, cool. Thank gosh. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to leave. So then Betsy, like, uses her powers to to send Brian back to, Av like, back to Avalon. Okay. Where, you know, he like, does his thing. Don't get too excited. Yeah, so he leaves. But, like... He's a person, so he has to use the gate, so she has to let him through, essentially. Yeah. So then she uses her powers to tag Rogue, mm -hmm. and she goes to Krakoa. Okay. Um, so in the morning, Rogue's like, all right, so Brian's gone, and we got to figure out where Betsy went. I think I know where she went because she tagged my brain last night, and so I'm going to go back to Krakoa and try to find her. Richter's going to go with her. Mm -hmm. Gambit gets duty of going to avalon to talk to jamie to see if brian's back there okay. and figure out how he got there because he can't use the gate on his own like right. did his kid come through did mm -hmm. betsy send him whatever so we get to see like jamie dealing with gambit yeah and gambit dealing with jamie and that's kind of fun because mm -hmm. like Gambit's pretty cool about it like, oh. he's just like and he totally like he, tom holland's up the interview where he's just like <laughs> he's like hey did brian come through here was betsy with him mm -hmm. he's like betsy my sister? Is she alive? Oh. And he's like, I'm, oh, I'm, an, I'm, pick an, a card. <laughs> I'm an awkward seal right now. <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah. No, okay, cool. He's like, it's not like I, I didn't make one. Yeah. So it's not me. And then it turns out he's like, I mean, I did. But it's just a body. There's like nothing in it. Like I made a Betsy. Oh. Just in case they needed it. Okay. Like Jamie made one oh. on his own. He's like, but I didn't fill it with anything yet. It's just like an empty husk, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Gambit also finds that Morgan Le Fay is still there. Okay. And he's like, this is bad. Yes. He's like, on a we lot of levels. Yeah. One, Coven Akaba, not happy. Yeah. And maybe if we just gave her back, that'd be better. He's like, yeah, but she's dangerous, so we can't do that. And Apocalypse mm -hmm. said not to. He doesn't say that, but that's obviously what yeah. it is. And like Gambit's like, also, I'm not cool with you just having a woman strapped down. Like that, yeah. no. no. I'm, I don't know if you know this, I'm Gambit. <laughs> I want to help all the ladies. Uh -huh. um, so basically, Jamie's like, no, check out this Iron Maiden. This is where I have Bessie. And he opens up the doors and he's like, huh. She's gone. There was a body in here and mm -hmm. uh, that's oh weird. God. Right? So you're like, cool, whatever. Uh, meanwhile, on Krakoa, um, Rogue and Gambit make a quick stop. Or not Rogue and Gambit. Rogue and Richter make a quick stop. Uh, to where Apocalypse was like studying magic and stuff like that, and like he oh, started no. writing down this history and stuff, and and like and Morgan Le Fay, wasn't he experimenting on her? Yeah, in other worlds. Yeah, yeah. Jamie still has her there. Oh, she's still strapped up and everything. Yeah, mm. and that's why Gambit's like, this is what this, this is all. Everything's bad. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. you're doing here is bad. <laughs> but like, you're Jamie Braddock and I'm Gambit, so I don't really have. Right. shot here so yeah i'll just chastise you verbally and then, and then leave immediately <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. fair and essentially like uh richter's kind of going through some stuff and then we get like a letter that's like richter turned in some stuff that was written by apocalypse in like a different language and like it turns out it's like about having a will and testament and being on krakoa because you don't really need that anymore right but he still kind of has one because mm -hmm. he realized I guess beforehand what was going to happen in Ten of Swords and so right. he's like I'm not going to be here I have some things to set up mm. and some affairs to take care of and so I leave everything to Richter okay mm -hmm. right yeah so like now he's in charge of all of this magic and like you know like history and all of like whatever apocalypse had going on and like yeah. Rogue's like uh huh and then Betsy shows up in her Captain Britain outfit and attacks Rogue and seemingly is going to like kill her right. and that's when Psylocke shows up and like you know saves rogue and it's like well you're right that's not her yeah like that's for sure right and that's it okay like so you're like okay betsy is back but it's not betsy right someone else is in there right okay. or whatever yeah. i don't know so we'll see cool but i like the idea that like obviously apocalypse 
and his machinations knew what was going down. And so he left it all to Richter and clearly has some other plan. Yeah. So there you go. Cool. Um, if you want, we can also talk about X-Force. Yeah. Which was just super fun, honestly. Yay. Um, this is X-Force was a book I hadn't really been picking up, but recently no. kind of jumped back into. It's written by Benjamin Percy with art by uh, Joshua. I'm trying to zoom around my finger. Uh, Kassara. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's this this specific issue was about Quentin Choir. Okay. Quentin yes. Omega, yes. And Phoebe is there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, this starts off with a super fun set of images, and it's just Quentin for three pages and his various deaths that he's had. Okay. Since coming to Krakoa, he's like, I always seem to die. Right. It's always me. Mm-hmm. Right. The, my favorite one was with a like um <laughs> a grizzly bear that looks like um weapon x <laughs> just so much fun nice. um especially if like you're like quentin choir dude <laughs> yeah like just yeah you just watch him die over and over again and yep. like part of him's like maybe i want to because i want to be reborn and so i keep trying to do it mm-hmm. like this way yeah um there's a mystery afoot in that like seemingly Kirkoa is under attack in the sense of like bad publicity Okay. Where, like, three different things have recently come up that, like, people are trying to blame mutants for. Sure. And, like, they're all being, like, obviously, like, orchestrated by. Right. And any one of those things would be a massive X-Men event. But instead, we're just going to deal with all three of them at once in a small arc from this book. Kind of. It's like one was, like, you know, these group called the Sapiens are, like, saying that, um, oh, like, the, the mutants are putting this, like... Uh, mind control organic into our medicine, like into the medicine we're giving people, and like uh-huh, yeah. beasts. Like we could very easily prove that that's not true, but if we did that, then we'd give away what's in it, right. essentially, so that people could recreate it themselves. We can't even do that, so we yeah. can't deal with that one. Sure. Um, then there was like a, one of the members of the Sapiens like threw himself out a window, mm-hmm. and so they're saying it was an assassination on that guy from the mutants, but he killed himself. Mm-hmm. Like nothing we can do about that. And then there was a cruise ship that was like there was a mass murder on it and like Quentin choir ends up going out there um to investigate that and when he gets there like it's messed up and there's like a little girl there and then like you know he has this moment where like he sees something we don't see what it is and then he wakes up on Krakoa in like one of the egg chambers right? oh, okay and like Phoebe's there and she gives him back his memories and essentially like you know she gives him all the stuff of like the two of them in particular so okay. we see them all like you know you know taking selfies together and like there's like they've got like one holiday sweater that they're wearing together and okay. it's like two like it, yeah it, they're doing all the things they're mm-hmm. building a snowman and like you know watching a sunset and whatever mm-hmm. we also see that like quinn choir keeps asking the five every time he dies to change little things here and there like for example like changing his hair from rose gold to pink and then from pink to rose gold <sighs> and then to like not have his hair grow on specific places on his face so he doesn't have to shave anymore and maybe he'll get rid of his toenails because those are annoying and they're like no we need professor x to say stop right you know and it's just like i like that in like like at first i was like oh that's just funny ha 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 but then as you go through this issue you realize that's like evidence of quentin's like trying to fix something with external frivolous changes to his life yeah when there's like a deeper need for change that he's afraid to address totally and i'm like that's That's cool cool. like that's cool um quentin decides to like go to new york with phoebe to investigate what happened on the ship he's like i need to know what happened how did i die yeah like how did this all go down Mm -hmm. right so like there are three survivors from the ship they go there and like they all claim that they were killed by mutants Mm. and so when they check the first guy he's got like slashes on his body and like he sees wolverine right but it's like a monstrous version of wolverine and like when quentin looks at the the scars he's like the spacing isn't right for wolverine's claws okay and then like he goes to a woman who's blind yeah and like she says her eyes are pushed in by colossus and he and she sees or he sees a monstrous that. version of yeah. Colossus, yeah and then there's a the little girl and he sees <clears> a monstrous <throat> version of himself and he's like i don't get it mm-hmm. he's like what did i do right and she's like, I don't think you did anything because, like, when you died, like, I checked him with healer. He doesn't know I did, but, like, I watched him, like, basically do an autopsy on you and your head was ripped off. Mm. Like, I don't think it was you. And, like, oh, you were filled with, like, glutamate, which is, like, the chemical for fear. 
So she's like, I don't think it was you. There's something else here. Yeah. And she's like, you know, the fact is, like, she decides that they're going to have a discussion about their relationship right then and there. Sure. And she's like, you keep part of your mind locked away and you won't let me in. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's like, you know, he shows, like, how, like, his parents didn't, like, care for him and thought that he was weak and so did everybody at school. And, like, so he just, he's never grown up. Yeah. And she's like, maybe it's time that, like, you were less kid and more Omega. Like, oh. Maybe it's time for you to, like, get over yourself. Right. And, like, let's do that with a makeover kind of thing. Mm. She's like, you dress oh, like... Oh, not just unlocking that part of your mind? No, but, like, she's like, you dress like a human. Mm -hmm. Why? Right. Like, why don't you dress like... Why don't you have an X-Men costume? Right. Mm -hmm. Like, why don't like why don't you use it's mutant like, Because fashion? I don't need to wear that shit all the time. Right. Well, no, but, like, he very specifically dresses like he's not part of them. Yeah. Um, and so, like, they, they go, and um, that guy with the multiple arms is there. Okay. Um, who I believe dresses Emma Frost. Ah. And um, Jumbo Carnation. <laughs> and she basically asked him to come when they were in the hospital because she knew where their, like, where their conversation was already going to go. Yep. So they go through <clears throat> a couple of different um, changes for him. Okay. Which yeah. are hilarious. I've seen those, yeah. One of them is, it's too pouchy. Yep. He's it got just a, looks it's like a cable, cable. costume. <laughs> yeah. They're great. Um, and then he, they settle on one. Oh, cool. And it's like dope looking. I, like I actually it. very much enjoy his, yeah, yeah. his new X-Men costume. Agreed. Um, while he's looking in the mirror, he sees like a monstrous version of himself for mm, a moment. And then there's okay. like a scream off panel. And like they see that um, like Carnation has like glowing pink eyes, almost like Quentin's taking control of him. And you're right. like, what is happening? Right. Mm -hmm. And then we cut to remember the the Zeno, the peacock like wearing villains from like early oh, yeah. like Dawn of X kind uh -huh. of stuff. Yeah, oh. they seemingly have just tanks of like pieces of I'm gonna guess mutants, mutants. and maybe they're utilizing their gotcha. abilities. And so like the next issue is teased that like when they get back to Krakoa, they're going to be fighting a monstrous version of Quentin Quire. That's cool. And I'm like, that's neat. That's a neat idea. This is a neat idea. It, it, it you know, you got these X-Men that keep dying. Are they collecting all the pieces? Yeah. I don't know, especially when you come to X-Force, but like, you know, there are some like ridiculously like silly over the top moments in this, yes. you know, in terms of like, you know, we'll have a makeover mm -hmm. and like, you know, which is again, another superficial thing, but like has a deeper meaning yes. in a sense, like, transitioning to being actually part of a team and part of the family yeah um but then you also have like that realization that like quentin really is trying to be as superficial as possible because he doesn't want to deal with things yeah like, that's fun well done right so cool yeah all right uh do you want to talk a little bit about eternals too yeah let's not get too deep into it i don't want to get too deep um, into it it's really well written yeah yeah like, it's, it's written by kieran gillen with art by Saad ribbick yeah it, it is just a super like well written bit of like prose like yes like it, it's but if you're not a fan of the eternals i don't know i don't I, right. you're probably not gonna dig this yeah i i guess because you, you really have to you know it, it feels like you're dragging your feet a little bit to be like i don't care about these characters or this universe so that said if you are interested in the eternals and like feel like there's no way you can jump into this without knowing about their history. This issue two has an infographic yeah. that explains like the connection between the Eternals and Thanos yeah. in a very concise and understandable way. It cuts out a lot of the you know other Extra stuff that stuff. if you want to find out more, you could. Yeah. But it gives you like a like connect the dots to that outcome. We talked about it a little bit when we did Neil Gaiman's Eternals, but this is like a really great like hey yeah. This is how we get there. Exactly, exactly. So it's 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 cool. Like the I think that the Arabic art gives it more gravitas. Yeah. Because otherwise it would just feel. I I think it's funny how like the marriage between art and writing and comics is so important, mm -hmm. so integral to making a book work or not. Like Gillen's narrative could feel like more pretentious if yeah. it didn't have the right art mix with it yeah or because you know the art might be cartoony and it's like well what the hell are you do is it supposed to be a joke mm -hmm. you know but it's there's something deeper to it you know there's a mystery about like who's talking in the plan and all this stuff and it's like that's interesting there's a lot of interesting work being done and of course like this book probably is selling like shit so i'm sure it'll be canceled after like six issues so it'll get a chance for for Gillen gillen to really narrow it down and give you a six issue like eternals book yeah, but the fact is, like, there is some really cool things going on in here. And if 
you like the idea sort of of Krakoa just in general. Yeah. That's kind of what the Eternals have been. They've been always. Anyway. Yeah. Um, and, and they're... Oh, you mean a group of like fringe humanoids that have powers that live on Earth but have their own little area and they can't die because they get resurrected by like a thing? Yeah, yeah by like a resurrection sort of protocol mm -hmm. and like they have like, you know... Folk who can come back and folk who can't come back. Yeah. Yeah. So if you like that concept, you might enjoy this because this is definitely dealing with that specific part of their um, mythos. Mm -hmm. And what if they didn't have it? Yeah. Any longer? What would happen? Yeah. So. It's cool. Uh, Pricey8040 for the Eternals. My only experience being the back issues you guys did. I really enjoyed issues one and two and I'm looking forward to three. Yeah. Honestly, like if you did re read Neil Gaiman's Eternals, that's kind of all you need. They'll fill in the blanks here and there of like kind of what they've been up to yeah. a little bit. Um, but... I think that that feels a little more epic than this, though, than the, the game in one. Oh, for sure. But I, I feel like Kieran Gillen is paying attention to that. He's paying attention to their history overall. Agreed. But I think he's definitely like resting on the popularity of that specific. That's run. right. That's right. So, uh, yeah, before we go uh, and move on to the next thing, are there any other books? I think we covered them all. I also uh, believe that we covered them all. But uh, if you wanted to win, this is your last chance. Hashtag Savage. You can, we're going to pick three winners. Uh, if you're here to the end, uh, you can live anywhere in the world. The only thing is I got to be able to email you. So uh, email me your your information and then we'll uh, we'll work it out. Uh, I'll send your info over to Valiant and they'll take care of the rest. So uh, before we do... What's that? I'm to go ahead. <laughs> so before we go, uh, before we move on to the next thing, I wanted to do some recommendations. We'll talk about what is the... Uh, Oh, the trailer. We talked about the trailer. Yeah. Snyder Cut. That's the thing. That's literally the title of this right. episode. I'm sorry. I forgot about it because it's just so forgettable. No, uh, <laughs> the, the, the Snyder Cut is here. Uh, I'm one of the few, I'm, I'm one of the many or few, depending on who you watch, uh, YouTube comic book people who uh, in the very beginning was like, there is no Snyder Cut. Don't worry about it. Like, let it go. Move on. Uh, you know, proof positive. You know, if you don't move on, uh, if you piss and moan loud enough you'll get what you want but like it turns out that there actually was like more to uh snyder's vision as there is with any movie you know you shoot like five hours of movie you whittle it down to two hours and you put out a movie yeah um as as it turns out uh you know whedon used a lot of his reshoot money to reshoot most of the movie that there is like a new narrative that like and because it's on a streaming service, it's being tested, the trillions of dollars were invested in anyway. It's like, there's no incentive not to make, like the to put literally all of the movie into the movie or every deleted scene, regardless of flow, narrative structure, or like pacing. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get the most complete or overly complete movie you could possibly hope for with this cut. Uh, the trailer is actually doing a nice job at the very least, I think, of giving you the impression that this will be a different, I don't know, story mm -hmm. than the last one. Story gonna be the same, superficially speaking. There's there's moon men from the stars. They're gonna mess everything up. They're gonna put boxes together. Justice League's gotta form and fight them. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is speculation regarding reshoots and extra stuff, particularly the Joker uh, and, and, and references to that. And the and what the audience gravitated towards the most when the first cut was justly came out, mm -hmm. right? Because they're like, oh man, that nightmare scenario was super dope. Superman's a badass and a, and, a, and a killer. Everything I've always wanted. Batman is wearing a trench coat. Again, everything I've always wanted to see. Uh, the world's ruined and destroyed. Exactly what I've always wanted. So, and parademons galore. Plus, maybe Dark Side. That's all people want. Mm -hmm. Now, it could be that Snyder's like, most of the movie is going to be the nightmare thing. Or he's like, M and the, the one thing everyone agreed that li that I listened to liked mm -hmm. was the nightmare stuff. So I'm going to really lean into that. Sure. Who knows? Uh, I have some speculation about what the movie is going to be. Uh -huh. And I think it's going to be completely restructured from what it was originally. Yeah. And like, okay. So folks, either side of this. Right. Whether you are. Whether you're for it, whether you're against it. And I don't think anybody's really against the Snyder Cut at this point. Well, all right. So like, whether you're for it or whether you don't care about it. Right. They, that's, that, really, that's it. Whether, it's, you, whether you're fanatically devoted to it or whether you have casual disinterest yeah, in it. Yeah, regardless of that, the movie you're getting now isn't going to be the movie he would have done back then. Regardless. Absolutely Regardless. And here's why. Before you at me. Yeah. because they're Well, they're going to at you they're anyway. They're already at me. They're already at they're me. They're going to at you because they're not going to get what you're about to they're, say. I know. But the fact is, like, regardless of how you feel about Mr. Snyder, 
He's a creative. Yes. And he's had a lot of time in between then and now. And so he's a different person. Than he was. Than he was then. And if you ask a creative person to start a painting, write a story, compose a piece of music, create a film, Mm -hmm. anything like that, four years ago, five years ago. Right. However long ago. Three, four, yeah. Right. And then you ask them to do it again now, it's going to be different. Right. Because creative people tend to grow and change over time based on moments that have happened in their lives, um, just in general progress in their creative careers well, and their artistic journeys. Yeah, and especially pivotal moments in their lives. Zack Snyder's daughter committed suicide during production of that movie. Yeah. So there could be a completely different like thing he wants to say about yes. life, about people, about everything that was not present in the previous movie. Yes. And... You will, so you got the creative aspect. Yep. You also have the business aspect of, oh, sure. we just focus tested the movie we made. No, I know. And it didn't take. No, I know. So I'm just going to take everything that everybody has said for the last four years that no one liked, excise that, Yep. do maybe the opposite or not that. Right. And just give you something else. Yeah, so regardless of that, it is 100% going to be different. Right. It's going to be different. Because and that's he's, fine. he's like, in a different place. Yeah. He's in a completely different place. Uh, whether it be creatively from a business standpoint Either or way. just just from influence in general. Totally. So it's going to be different. And like, you know, he has the benefit of time. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and hindsight. And hindsight. <laughs> and, he has, and he has the benefit of also being like, that wasn't even, that movie that I shot, that wasn't even my movie. That right. was somebody else's movie. Right, right. So like anything that sucks, mm-hmm. I can just blame on that. <laughs> Like, it literally has a different person's name attached to it. No, it's true. It's true. But, like, I just want folks to keep that in mind because it's, like, you know, what you're seeing is the product of, like... It's not, like, what you would have gotten in 2017. Yeah. It doesn't mean there aren't shades of it and there aren't, like, he had notes and there are there is actual footage there, but, like, it's a different product. Yeah. It's a different... It's a product of a different time, a different mindset. Yeah. And, like, for what good, for bad, for neutral, for ridiculous, for whatever, like... It's coming out, and it's going to be four hours long? Yeah, I think four. With an intermission? With an intermission. With an intermission. Which you don't really need, because, like, it's not coming out in theaters until it does. Well, I mean... But, like, because my intermission's my pause button. I don't don't need to... I don't need to. I don't need to be told well, where the where the could, break is. The intermission could also be just at a place where it's like, no, no, now now is, is a good now break. is the time. And I like that idea, and it could be used really cleverly. Because here's the thing, it could also just be dope. Who says we're covering for Whedon? Are you fucking for real? I'm sorry. I don't. I don't normally do this, but like, that's just. I love how everyone who does any kind of review in any kind of context, particularly when it comes to comics or movies, has to like go, let me give you like 20 minutes of preamble to cover my ass to explain what a subjective thought is. And then someone's like, I misinterpreted what you said and I'm going to fucking say this. And it's like, you're, you, you, you're going to miss everything cool and die angry. And it's like, <laughs> shut up. Like, no one's covering for Whedon. I'm literally saying that fucking Snyder can blame everything on Whedon. That's not covering for Whedon. No. Whedon just... doesn't need me to cover for him. Motherfucker's, like, got enough Me Too shit up his ass to, like, to, to, to cover his entire career. Yep. He doesn't, you know, whatever. Doesn't... Shut up. So, <laughs> as far as the trailer goes, you know, it's, like, fine. I'm glad he didn't so, use Hallelujah again. I will say what I, what I feel, like, was a misstep in terms of specifically for Snyder yeah. was showing Joker ahead of time. Yes. Because like, it felt like that moment at the end of the trailer was meant to be his mic drop, but yes. it was all over the place. Yeah, but he we all knew. It. He released it on his own. And I was like, that's a shame. Yeah. Like regardless, again, regardless of how been, you feel about it, it I was like, a cool moment. I felt the like trailer building to that moment. And it was kind of like, ah, oh, we already saw. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that the fact is, <laughs> That's, we don't, like, the world today doesn't watch movies like that. Mm -hmm. People don't want to be surprised anymore. Like, that, those days are over. Nobody wants to have a genuine reaction to anything anymore. They watch other people have genuine reactions to that shit. Because, like, that would have been a genuinely cool moment. I wasn't, like, disappointed because, number one, eh, number two, like, I watched the trailer. You know, like, if I I wanted to be surprised by everything, I just would have lived in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. But... Who knows? The thing that really people are taking away from that moment is the we live in a society line, which I think is like surprisingly, oddly like catching. Like I I was blown away by people's insistence on that line 
Because it if I had not seen it trending, I didn't and I just seen it. the trailer, right? It's so like blink and you'll miss it, or 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 hear something else and you'll miss it. Mm-hmm. But like, if I didn't know it was trending, I wouldn't have thought twice about it because the his name is the Joker. <laughs> A, the the kind of creative that Zack Snyder is to have the Joker at the end of the world say we live in a society is like the height of irony. It is like the absolute pinnacle of what Zack Snyder thinks the Joker would say. Mm-hmm. And so like people are like, I can't believe he's like gamer gating or I don't know what the hell people's interpretation of what he's saying is. Mm-hmm. I know that like we live in a society is like a George Costanza meme. And I know that like, it's it's attributed to like people who you know like worship Heath Ledger's Joker, but at the same time, it's meant to be ironic. It's yeah. a joke, and Snyder's also a very self aware person who like wants to target people who say bad things. Like I bet Superman either never snap naps next snaps anybody or he next snaps seventeen people in this movie. <laughs> like just to just to say f you to everybody. Sure, but like. I think it's just a weird joke and I don't think it's worth the hype or the effort that's being put into it by the meme culture. But uh, otherwise, like, you know, the trailer showed you different stuff and I think that the structure is going to be very different from what it was before. And, uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm in part, like, actually excited to see it because I want to see, like, I've never seen a movie like this before. That's going to be on the poster. <laughs> I've never seen a, I've never seen a movie like this before, Comic Pop. Well, literally be, nothing. Be, this is this movie is is almost created like with time travel. That's right. <laughs> like, there is no there is no other movie in human history where someone's like, well, they made like most of the movie, and then they like gave it to somebody else, and they made a different movie, and then they released that, and said, so, and no one liked it, and like, and and then a, a freaking culture grew out of his out of worship for this creative, and they like badgered the studio into making it, and the studio spent trillions of dollars and got acquired by another telecom company, mm-hmm. and so they needed to freaking make something that was going to get people to sign up for HBO Max, so it literally none of the letter writing campaigns actually did it it was just like the desperation of having people need to sign up for hbo max that made this thing came into reality because they're like oh i guess like tens of thousands of people want to freaking watch this if we get tens of thousands of people to sign up for this stupid thing we made like i guess people will watch it Ew. so like but like that's the world we live in in which like that's right. how the snyder cut came to its existence like i've never seen another movie made but a, a movie made twice by the same person you know what i mean made for uh, and and not made in the same sensibilities that movies are made because like if snyder was given another chance he'd still have to make like a 90 minute theatrical cut you know or at the very least a two and a half hour long theatrical cut but this is like no it's coming out on a thing that like is untested even though it's been tested by netflix for like 20 years but like (laughs) it's untested by us right right and so it's like we're just gonna put out this thing and it's like, that's kind of amazing and remarkable. And I can't wait to see it. Nice that somebody mentioned it was like the Donner Cut. The Donner Cut don't freaking count. The Donner Cut was a directed DVD movie. It's hobbled together. It looks like shit. No. I was, I would say that, you know, it, it's more akin to like watching the Lord of the Rings uncut or like, you know, you know the director's cut and then. The extended editions. Yeah. Or like the theatrical the extended editions where it was like before. The Hobbit movies, they like did theater theatrical releases were like, here's all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like a ton. So for some folk, like that's too much movie for them. And yeah. Tyler Poe, they, that's all they want. And so for folk who are like excited about this, I'm sure they're like, I don't, four hours, I don't care. Right. I'll take I, six I hours, 12. Care. Why not? I will say I am shocked, shocked that HBO didn't demand that this was released weekly yeah. to try to get two months of Well, they tried. They started. I know. I know. I'm just shocked that they yeah. didn't push on that. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they have another, maybe they have another thing coming out afterwards. Perhaps. But like, you know, people are going to sign up for this for, to get this. Yes. What's going to happen the next month? Right. Well, I'm, I'm guessing that there's some mechanism in place or maybe they're like, it would be disingenuous to, to put like a thing in there where it's like, if you sign up in like the month it comes out, you are signing up for a two month thing. <laughs> no, I know, no, but like if they had done it in the like pieces, they would have to like, and they timed it at the right part of the month. They would get first month and, and then the another month. month. Yeah, I mean they did the same. I think they did Unless that it's with 30 Wonder days, Woman, and then it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think they did that with Wonder Woman as well, where it's like you can't cancel or you have to get get both of them or something. like Sure. That. There was a thing in place. They're gonna do the same thing with Godzilla and Kong. Like who knows? Yeah. Um, 
I'm glad it's gonna be four hours. I like more movie. Like for me, I like long movies. I'm like movie, yeah, more. Sometimes like, I do, sometimes I don't. Like yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, it depends. You know, like when AI came well, out, I, I was think, like, yeah, three, four, five endings, give it to me. I think it depends on you know someone's availability. Right. You know, there are some weeks where I'm like, I could totally do that, and yep. then there are other weeks where I'm like, I, I ain't only got, have like I ain't got time hours. for that shit. Yeah, and that's the problem. Is like in in the line of work where we are in, it'd be irres- not irresponsible, but it'd be like. Oh, we have to watch it'd be, it. It'd be technical suicide to not cover it or to wait a month to see it. Yeah. So it's like, we're going to have to a, a, a set aside four hours to watch this movie. Uh, that isn't really a movie. Uh, it's more like a series or like a, or like a, a marathon or something. Mm. But like, I, you know, like, congratulations are in order. He got to make the movie that, not that he wanted to make, but that he got to want to make. Mm. And that's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, hopefully more creatives are given the opportunity to redo their movies over here. See, I... Like, like David Ayer, I apparently. don't want that. Yeah, because I'm like... Because it's like, you know when I first started seeing this shit? And you know what I'm going to say? George fucking Lucas. I know. And it's like, hey, don't ruin Star Wars. And it's like, yeah, well, now it's been so like far removed that like the, the, the re-releases or the special editions are like, oh no. Like people have like, fondness Wait, for that and i know i know we've joked about this whole like release the whatever but they should release the uh lynch uh fire walk with me cut right yeah <laughs> which by the way we basically saw I because when we saw the movie we're like what the fuck and then we saw like a 45 minute long like trailer of just <laughs> a, a, a playlist of just the deleted scenes but you cut out like two hours this movie yep it was over an hour yeah <laughs> yeah where is the yeah hey hbo max you're the guys who have fire walk with me where's the lynch cut a fire walk with me where it's like four hours and yeah, it's, just, and like, it's just season two and a half yeah and it's like oh hey there's the rest of the movie that makes a little more sense it really did make a lot more sense it having did. seen those. it doesn't still wasn't great but. yeah it's bizarre <laughs> it, it's a weird it's a weird world we live in and it's only getting weirder and i'm excited to see it because like i am kind of like wow like there's a thing that i never thought would happen that i never expected that i can't imagine how it's going to change and, and, like here's the thing like it could bomb and bomb, I mean, like, no one signs up for HBO Max, right? There's two scenarios. I, there's no way it bombs. There's no way. And, and I'm going to say that because, like, regardless of the actual, like, num- quantitative number of folk who are all in on Snyder yeah. and the Snyder cut. It's going to be, like, thousands of people who are going to sign up for HBO Max. There's just too much of, like, a media frenzy about, like, the content available for, like, news outlets to put out about this. Yes. That, like, out of curiosity. Yeah people will watch this. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's just, it's going to be a phenomenon. Mm-hmm. More so, I think, than Batman versus Superman, which I've been on record being like, that'll be the biggest movie of all time. Because <laughs> uh, why wouldn't it be? It's like, oh, well, I, I can think of a couple of reasons why. Uh, but like, I, I I feel like if it is, it, well, then it's going to be successful or it's going to be a monumental success. So, someone just said that David Lynch directed direct a superhero movie. Moon no. Knight. <laughs> Yes. Moon, Moon Knight. Knight. Yeah. We're getting the show, unfortunately, uh, now. But they like, should have done a David Lynch Moon David Knight, Knight Moon show. Knight oh, God. Yeah. Whole show where we get to go home with Marlene and Frenchie and we learn about their friends and family. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Bring in, bring in Lynch now. It's but too only late. If, only if Mark Frost is working with him, too. <laughs> no. Sleepwalker. No. That's where we got Sleepwalker. No. David Lynch is Sleepwalker. <laughs> they uh, could also put him on Strange. I'd be cool with that. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Let's yeah. get a monkey. <laughs> um, it's Rintra. <laughs> Same shooty. But uh, yeah, I, I, I. But it, here's. It's either gonna be a success or a monumental success. And the monumental success is actually kind of like I'm not worried, but I'm more like morbidly concerned about it because it's like this will dictate. Because here's the thing, like, when Batman Begins made a bazillion dollars, Warner Brothers was like, dark, right, got it. You know Nolan helped produce, like, the Man of Steel movie. Like, that's it. We do yeah. those from now on. When Marvel mm-hmm. Cinematic Universe, when, like, Iron Man did well, those, do them. Do do Iron Man for everybody, forever. And it's like, that's not how art is made. I mean, like, maybe commercial art. Yeah, yeah. My concern about this, too, is, like, Regardless, like, here's the thing. Look, like, I'm, like, yay, you're getting what you wanted, right? right? But, like, they're also putting, they're, like, putting work into and putting out a Batman movie. That will yeah. be literally Something nothing else. like this at yeah. all. And, and, and I think it's not even in a new universe. And I think I'm it's just, just a Batman movie. Like, I, I, I'm just afraid that, like, it's not going to have an opportunity to stand on its own without... People comparing it to... 
Yeah, and I mean, comparisons will always be made, mm -hmm. but, you know, since this was a triumph in getting this created and getting this out there, and it doesn't hurt that they had an app they wanted to push and needed content for it. Yeah. There was a pandemic, and this is easy to, to make, in a sense. Because sorry, like, just, it's made in editing. Yeah. Except for the shoots they made. Right. But, um, yeah. but you know what I mean? Like, there's this other film that's going to come out and, like, going to have characters that you see in this film yes. completely portrayed in a different way. Yeah. And I, I hope it gets the opportunity to succeed or fail on its own. Right. That's it. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for that Batman movie. Yeah, I, I'm, so. I'm also really disappointed that they're like, no, 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 that's going to be a Batman movie all by itself and it's not going to be set in anything. And I'm like, yeah. no, I wanted to see those characters. I don't want it to be not set in anything, but, like, yeah, I, I just feel... Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I just want it to, like... Just, just treat it's its own thing, yeah. and it's okay that it's its own thing. Right, right, right. Uh, Jimmy, Jonathan, Lee, hi from Chicago. Hello, Hello Chicago. Hopefully, you're not inundated the, with snow. The windy city. Yeah, apparently windier and colder. Is it? Uh, oh. I feel the reason they are so much support for the Snyder Cut is that some are more sympathetic due to the recent news about Whedon. It could be that like Whedon's stock dropping sure. could have put more people onto the onto the Snyder bandwagon. It mm -hmm. could be. I mean, like, you know. That's one. That's one take. The fact is, like anything, I'm an educate. I used to be from education, so like you know, oh, the teachers are bad, uh, the students are bad, uh, the parents are bad. Like it's everything is very like nothing is black and white, especially when it comes to human like behavior and like interpretation and, and execution. So it's like it's it's a lot of things. Like it could be that like it's it's it, people's excitement was just as much for this and it's mm. like but like the hbo max thing the pandemic thing the whedon thing snyder's own stuff mm -hmm. the the fandom there like there's a lot of contributing factors and it all works together mm -hmm. so it's amazing uh it but, is i i just say like regardless of how you feel about it if you decide to check it out do so from try to look at it from both the subjective and objective yes. viewpoints. Like it's okay. Listen, like there are things that I love that I objectively know are bad. Right. I'm like, I know this is badly yeah. made and it's not well acted right. or it's just not well produced. Just enjoying it. But I just enjoy it. And right. I know that it's not maybe what it should be. I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but no. like, it's okay to look at something from both angles. Agreed. And you don't have to like, not, you don't have to ignore You're something's issues or problems to say that you're a fan you're not on a team <laughs> you know what i mean like that's really what it is like you're watching a movie but you're it, not going to a sports arena who's like you know you're not painting your face right you know you're you're, you're, cons you're not going to a museum and being like picasso all the way fuck you uh uh, uh, uh van gogh <laughs> you know what i mean like it's it's you're just you're you're consuming art <laughs> even if it's like schlock or or corporate art yeah you, you know you, you're not on a team it's true but even if you are on a team like i we know you know i, I i'm not a hashtag i'm always on a team i am not a big sports person but we know people who are and yes. even those people can objectively look at the team and be like i love my team but they're really messing up here here and here that doesn't mean they don't love their team any less yeah like it's it's okay to acknowledge but that also, something like, isn't great but we also have seen where it's like tribalism is dangerous and problematic yeah. you know like where it's like hey your team like screwed up but it's like well my team but it's my team it's yeah. like because of a, a place you automatically you, you were arbitrarily born to yeah. you, you you fanatically attach yourself to that wagon uh ricky walter helping us out thank you very much well, thank you very very so, much so uh that i think that's enough for this for the snyder cut trailer uh you know we we, we saw it it's intriguing uh, but we are going to recommend some books, and then we're going to get into the winners of the Hashtag Savage <laughs> Contest. Uh, Sean D., you just described Batman and Robin, man. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I can see some folk being like, objectively, I know this is bad, but subjectively, I just, I don't know why I like yeah, it. Yeah, like Face Off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible movie. Woohoo! Doves! Um, <laughs> don't ever do the thing from Face Off where you, where you put your, your hand on somebody's face to say they love you. No one likes that. Yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> Nobody likes that. Um, I have glasses, so I appreciate you not doing. Yeah, I didn't want to smear your glasses. To me. 
But uh, yeah, so here's some books that are coming out this week we think you should pick up. And then, hashtag Savage. Uh, speaking of hashtag Savage, Savage number one is going to be on sale this Wednesday. Pick it up uh, at your local comic book store to check out, at the very least, Nathan Stockman's art. Uh, it's written by Max Bemis, <laughs> and it's launching a whole new a whole new uh, status quo for the Savage character. I, I love in the in the chat, sorry, right? face, and then like a comment later. Oh, oh. <laughs> you don't know how many times that show is that movie's referenced on back issues that we just cut it right out uh so let's just oh uh batman catwoman number three from tom king and clay man uh this is a book that's like it's pretty cool I i'm digging that it. cover the cover's great the cover is dope i'm not sure if I'm, I'm thrilled with their redesign of phantasm but like you know whatever it's cool uh and hey remember that book the last ronin Issue 2 is finally coming out, which means I have to go to Zap because they have it reserved for me. Oh, nice. Uh, but yeah, Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin, number two, which is Eastman and Laird and Tom Waltz doing stuff with the with, with the Turtles. It's Dark Knight Returns for the Ninja Turtles. It's Dark Knight Returns, Ninja Turtles. It's worth checking out. That's kind of, that's a great concept. Yes. That that's, is a great concept. Right? That's all you need to know is that it's Dark Knight Returns for the Ninja Turtles. Uh, Future State, Superman, Worlds of War, number two. Uh, I was excited to see this. I don't know if this is the last one or not, uh, but like this is every every other book is like where's Superman? This is the one book that's like here he is, and like half of the issue was not him being where he was supposed to be. I'm super excited to read more about Mister Miracle and Midnighter in yes, this book. So yes. regardless, so like, Worlds of War number two coming out. Check it out. King that of Black. one is that was in a, that's a pricey one, guys. It's it is sixty four pages, eight dollars. So bucks. that's up to you. But you, you are wanna, getting more stories. You're getting three stories, but if you. It's, it's not 64 it's stories. It's only worth it if you want all three of the stories. That's right. Yeah, you're not you're not getting 64 pages of what Superman's doing. No. You're not getting Planet Hulk Superman for, for 64 pages. No. Um, King of Black number four is finally coming out. Hey. We get to see what happens with Thor and stuff. I think this is the issue where it's like it's all X-Men. Or at least the cover is. Who knows? Covers are lies. But yeah. Oh, the exciting exclusive preview to Demon Days. What even is that? I don't know. By cool. Peach Momoko. Uh, but what else is coming out? Um, I'm going to give a shout out to Savage Avengers number 18 because since Deadpool's over, hey, you can check it Deadpool out there over there. <laughs> and hey, King of Black tie-in. Yeah, it's a King of Black tie-in, fine, but it's got Conan and um, the, the Hellfire Club. But as a tie-in, it might be easier if you haven't been picking this up to jump into it and yes. not feel so out of your depth. Yeah, because you know Duggan's like, screw this stupid book it's, tie-in. Yeah. I gotta, I'm gonna pants this. What crazy heist will ruin Deadpool's 30th anniversary. Ha ha. Um, it's written by Jerry Duggan with art by Kev Walker, so feel free to check that out. Yep. And I'll also give a shout out to Once in Future number 16, written by Kieran Gillen with art by the amazing Dan Mora. Yep. Colored by Tamara, uh, Tamara Bonvillain. I love that last name. Yeah, Bonvillain. Bonvillain. So close to being a, a Blofeld. I know. Ugh. Um, I also want to put it out there, guys. Um, for those who are a huge fan, huge fan of that X-Men issue that had art by Brett Booth, well, now's your chance to go grab a book that has art by Brett Booth about the X-Men written by Fabian Nicieza called X-Men Legends Number 1. Yup. It, there it is. If you were like, I don't like this Krakoa stuff, check this out. Yep. Because it is literally the exact opposite. Yeah, it is an in-continuity story, I think. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it, well, it says, x writers return to classic eras of mutant superheroes in all new in-continuity stories set during their fan-favorite runs. So it's like going to so be it's time. Like, it's like that uh, Spider-Man book. Yes. In a way. So if you were craving classic X-Men and you didn't feel like you were getting it from the current run, this is for you. Yeah. You can go check that out. Totally. Uh, okay, and Kev bought 1995. In a very, in the very least, this will be an interesting to see, and I'm very happy Snyder got to finish his vision. Plus, we get Granny and Darkseid, hoping to have Barda and Scott make a cameo. Screw the internet trolls. We'll see. I, I, I don't want to see Barda and Scott because I know they're making a movie, and I want it to kind of like, I don't, I don't want to take away from it or change it in any way. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to see that new God's movie. Yeah. Um. So here we go. I'd rather see a an HBO Max Mr. Miracle adaptation. Yeah. Well, sure. Show. Yeah, that'd be amazing. For sure. Uh, so let's jump into it. Here we go. So in, in order to win, I'm going to say your name. And then you and the chat go like, that's me. Yeah. You know? Or it, like, it, it's over. If you haven't answered, it's, you're done. Yeah. Here so we go. Here we go. First one is Isaac. Just Isaac. I'm going to see if I can find you. There it is. Oh, there he is. 
I'm t- I- I'm I'm tagging you. This is the part of the show. That's why we do the re- the recommendations. This is where we do this part, and hopefully, folk are here. So yeah. while we're waiting to see if Isaac Isaac gets like a minute, uh, but like while we're waiting to see if Isaac has won, and by the way, Isaac, hey, hey! that's me. Congratulations, yeah. Isaac. So Isaac, you have won, and here's what the other two are going to win. You're going to w- you w- email me saladcompop.net. Tell me you're Isaac. I, you are going to and then send me your deeds. And actually be Isaac. And actually be Isaac. <laughs> but send me your email. And here's what we're going to do. You're going to get a copy of uh, Savage Number 1. It's going to be a sketch variant that has no cover on it. And Nathan Stockman is going to draw a head sketch of a single character of your choice, any character you like. Mm-hmm. So you'll need to send me your home, your your address and the character you'd like. That's how we're going to do. So email me, salacombob.net. Okay. Here we go. That's number one. That's Isaac. number one. The next one up is Chai. I think it's Chi. Or Chi. Yeah, that's right. Chai is with an A. Yeah. So it's Chi. I guess it could be Shy if you're in Chicago. It you're could shy. be Shy. Yeah, yeah. Shy Town. So Shy or Chi or Chi. You have been the Cause, second winner. Because we're horrible at pronouncing names. Yes. If you email me, no social security numbers. No, no do not send <laughs> do me. Do not give us that. That will be deleted, and you'll be out of the contest. And I'll go to the next one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Chi is the next one. Yes, excellent. Uh, so we'll see if they uh, if they respond. Waiting, waiting to find waiting out. Waiting to find out. This is the part that I hate. This is always the most exciting part of the show. Right? Yeah. Where we do this. Yeah. Hey, did you guys watch that new WandaVision? Uh, right? It's pretty cool. I, I, it, It's a very uh, interesting, uh, what's it called? Uh, independent show. I don't know if anybody's really watched it yet. Oh, I don't know. But yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, she is going to get another, like, minute. But uh, we'll see what happens. We have one more. I and hear it. We question. were just talking with someone today that like the like the last few episodes are going to be hour long episodes for yeah, WandaVision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is exciting because like it's been not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, should we just go like that, or should we should we bounce around? I don't know. Right. I I assume it's in order. Yeah, it is in order. We're just going to go in order. I'm not going to I'm not going to screw with the order. No, this is the that's order, the order in, which that, in which it was. So we're going to move on. It's the order in which the list was generated, I believe, and so I think that's the way to go. Yeah. Well, uh, don't worry, Greg Garley. We didn't say your name. So uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move to the third one, and if she doesn't get back, then then we'll... we're gonna go to the next one. Yeah. Uh, the third one is. <laughs> well, I hate to give this to him because he's a villain. Uh, is Victor Creed. <laughs> uh, yes, that was the way in which the list was generated from the automatic list generator. That's right. So, Victor Creed, come on down. You are... <laughs> Thanks, Sal. No problem, Greg Garlow. <laughs> I'm sorry! <laughs> we did, you did, yeah, it was not nice. No, I just I didn't want him to worry about it. You know what I mean? You didn't, you didn't miss anything. <laughs> oh. now listen, there, there, might be a, there, there may be a second... Second winner in our Who future. knows what's going to happen Because we haven't heard from Victor yet either. Victor Creed, that's me. Hey, All right, yay. congratulations, Victor. So email me, Victor Creed. Email me, sal at compop.net. Give me your name, your email address, uh, your, your home address, and also, of course, the single character you'd like to receive on your Savage Number 1 sketch variant cover from Nathan Stockman. Hooray! Congratulations, Victor. Uh, and now we're going to move on. I'm afraid we have to move on. Sorry. Sh- I'm sorry, Chi. Chi. Sorry. Chi, this is the worst time to go to the bathroom. Uh, so here we go. Yep. All right. This is the name I know. Yes, we know this one. Grievous Shish, congratulations. You have taken Chi's place. <laughs> Grievous Shish, shoot me an email. I know you will. <laughs> Hayden Walsh says, if you guys could fund an, any superhero movie that you know won't get made, what would you do? I do Superboy having Silver Age adventures with the Legion. If I could fund any superhero movie, you know, won't get made? Yeah. Mm. I can't believe, I don't, I don't see Grievous in here. I'm trying to answer this. Also, Great Garly, no problem. Yeah. I'm digging on witches. <laughs> uh, love you too, Victor. Uh, who would you do? Uh, a character that they won't make? They won't make. <sighs> Don't say sleepwalk. I was gonna say. <laughs> um, um Aranya, I guess. Really? She'd be fun. Okay. Like give her a show. Like uh 
you know, like what's it called? Like like Ms. Marvel. You what? know? I would I have more, by the way. I don't don't worry. How if Reba just screws us up. I don't know we'll if they want, I think they might make this one, so never mind. Because I okay. was gonna say static. Oh yeah. But I think they might make that. There's no way they're not. I, I feel think like they they're said gonna they, do that. I think they said something yeah, about like but wanting like, to adapt. I would those. like to I would like to see like a an static. original. Yeah. Not like, the cartoon, not which the is available cartoon, now. Not the cartoon, like the original, like first issues that came out. Yep. I would like to see that. Yeah. I can't believe it. Both number twos are not here. Moving on. Here we go. Uh, we are about to replace both Chi and Grievishish. With? With. Here we go. Ready? Yep. I'm ready. The Grey Initiate. Grey Initiate? <laughs> this is like Family Feud. You have the opportunity to steal. Uh, <laughs> all right, the Grey Initiate. Are you there? This is you. This is your time. Are you there? Or are you going to be the third number two <laughs> to the not get the it? The second slot is the most dangerous. It is. It really is. Apparently. Apparently. This is getting exciting. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, all right. It's done. This is where Grievous and she are like, no! <laughs> But they're going to do that on the repeat. Yeah. But uh, congratulations, all three of you. Email me, saladcompop.net. Send me your information. <sighs> and a character you'd like, single character. And that's it. That we was intense. That was very intense. That, that was intense. intense. That, that was, that's why we do the show live, ladies and gentlemen. We were, that we, kind of stuff. We were camping, and it was intense. <laughs> I yes. have to leave now. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to our channel for more. And stay tuned for more tomorrow. Uh, no Elseworlds, but the following week there will be. And, uh, yeah, if you want more, stay here for more, because there's plenty of it to go around, I guess. I don't know. Thanks. Hey, if you do want more tomorrow, Tiffany's going to be streaming on twitch.tv slash comic pop, I think, right? Yeah. So go. I'm there. You better be there. Go to twitch.tv slash We weren't there last week, but that was for... That was technical. That difficult. was a like an unmitigated disaster. Indeed. Unmitigated is right. So <laughs> just, follow us. <laughs> every time I fix something, something else broke. That's right. It was like being on the Falcon for a second. <laughs> yeah. But you just have to hit the thing. And, then and it did not, did not do anything. Um, yeah. So... We'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to follow us twitch.tv slash comic pop to watch Tiffany play streams tw Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And that's it. Did we say the third winner? We yeah, said it, right? It's the great. Oh, no. The other one was, it was Victor Creed, the gray initiate, and. And. Uh... Isaac. Isaac. Yes. I was like, it was one word. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. That's it. Yeah, show's over. So we'll see you next week. All right. So long. Bye.